everybody flooding in. How is everyone doing on this fan-fucking-tastic Sunday chat? Merry Christmas Eve, everybody. Merry Christmas Eve in the chat. Happy holidays if you don't celebrate uh, Christmas. Uh, but we're live early, uh, obviously. Uh, somebody said you're saving me from talking to my relatives right now. I'm shocked that you're with your relatives right now. Like, chat, when does your family party start? I feel like that's like an evening thing. It's noon, right? And for you, it might be like 9 a.m. You look tired. I just got up, like flat out. Like, I woke up a half hour ago, 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 took a shit, ate Cheerios, and then launched the old fucking stream. We're here. I just got up early as shit. Oh, well, early for me. 11 p.m. for me. Oh, are you one of those families that opens uh, presents, like, right when it hits uh, Christmas Day? I don't celebrate Christmas. Well, that's why I said happy holidays. Um, Water for the sub, earth for the five and ten buddies. My brother said you laugh like rabbits from Rabbit's Invasion. Now when you laugh, I can't unhear it. Like those rabbits that, that just say incoherent words. Uh, Max for the sub. Fox. Fox man for the fucking 10k biddies. What the actual Merry fuck? Christmas, Joe, I love you, man. Thanks for everything. Bro, thank you for the fucking 10k biddies, Fox man. And bro, thank you for being a goaded dude. Fucking playing video games with me and doing it, being a great guy. Thank you for the fucking 10k bits, man. Holy shit. Dude, fucking dub for that. The tax collector, Derek, and system for the sub ASCAP for the three. Merry Christmas, uh, or Merry Christmas Eve, Joe. I have to work so early, uh, so the early stream is nice. Well, that's why I wanted to do this, too, is because, uh, I know a lot of people are busy on Christmas Eve later in the day, and I'm busy on Christmas Eve later in the day, so, uh, I wanted to go live now. And then it enables me to go live for a little bit longer, because I'm not going to be live tomorrow, uh, because it's Christmas Day. Uh, Max of Water for the sub, I already said that. Waltie for the sub. Uh, Punkas, Icar, uh, Jack PR for the sub. Dolls for the fucking 10 gifteds. Uh, thank you for the fucking 10 gifted subs, dolls. That might be more than 10 subs. Thank you for the fucking gifteds. Thank them if you got a sub. Thank you for the fucking subs, dolls. Uh, lesbian and evil for the sub. Uh, system for the sub. Derek for the sub. Queso for the five. Anyways. Uh, chat, what are we doing today? We got a lot of things in store today. Uh, because it's a little festive time. We're doing a few festive things. Uh, obviously it's still sticking in the regular realm of the Joe Bart React rant shit. Uh, but... We are going to be doing uh, Christmas-themed reacts, Christmas-themed rants, Christmas-themed things. Starting out, we have some reacts. Uh, we have a Darman video, Christmas Darman video. Should be a banger. Watched a, watched a Thanksgiving Darman video on Thanksgiving. Now we're watching a Christmas Darman video on Christmas. Probably going to be a brutal watch. Uh, I told 100 kids Santa isn't real. I don't know how this video is going to go, but uh, that, that, that one will be good. Um, then I just have some regular ones, uh, why your hometown, because I didn't want to do too many Christmas theme things, why your hometown sucks, uh, TikToker breaks into a house for a video, and then Santa's horrifying evolution, this is a longer video, then we're going to be doing an uwu fufu quiz, uh, and me and my chat are going to be, uh, doing a tournament to decide which Christmas movie is the best, this has a shit, I, this probably doesn't have every Christmas movie, keep in mind. Uh, but this has a lot of fucking Christmas movies, so we're going to be doing uh, this. Uh, maybe in the middle of reacts. We might do it like here, right? Because I don't, I don't want to just do all reacts. We'll probably do it around there. Uh, somebody said, wait, he's not real? Well, no. I'm not saying Santa isn't real, but this guy told 100 kids that Santa wasn't real. Young for the three. Merry Christmas. Hope you and Brooke have happy holidays. Thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. Sour for the sub, mustard for the sub, uh, iCars for the 2,700 biddies. That's Merry Christmas show. I love you. Thank you. Mr. Safety for the three. My friend said your eyelids look like ball skin, and he can't watch you because of that. I do have very hooded eyelids. Do you guys have hooded eyelids? I have a lot of extra skin on my eyelids. That's, like, fucked up that your friend would say that about me. Fuck your friend. That dickhead. Oh, he's making fun of my eyelids. Oh, sorry. Sorry, I have to go like this if I if I have to fucking put sunscreen on my eyes. I have extra skin on my eyes. 
Who gives a shit? You're telling me you're telling me this motherfucker can't watch me because it looks like my eyes are ball sacks. They don't look like they're ball sacks. Like right now, you can't even really tell. See, now you're pissing me off. Now I'm self conscious about it. Fuck. <laughs> Case him for the five. Read a story. You want me to read a Christmas story? Jacob for the sub sour for the sub really for the three. How, what Christmas story would I even fucking read? Uh, I love your eyelids. You love my eyelids. Okay, see, uh, settle down. <laughs> Joe, I love your eyelids. Don't, no, don't be, like, see, that's like, when, that's like that type of shit that you say to a friend that's like, obviously, like, bro, who the fuck's gonna say I love your eyelids? Read a story? Dude, we're doing this first. I might read a, I don't even know, what, I don't even know if there's, Chris, what Christmas story would I fucking read? Jacob for the sub. Chat, lock in. We're just gonna get right into this shit. We'll do our rants and shit along the way. I'm not going to stall. First video of the fucking day, chat. Family fight. Oh, read the Grinch. You want me to read Dr. Seuss? Okay, maybe. Maybe. If I could find an online version of the Grinch, I'll read the Grinch. Family fight goes too far on Christmas. What happens next is shocking. Aucus for the five. Did you check No Rad Santa Tracker yet? Oh, no, I didn't. Oh my god, I didn't. Oh shit, hold up. Oh my god. Yo, Santa has delivered... Santa has delivered 2 billion gifts. He's in Pakistan. Chat, it's, isn't it always just shocking how he's like never over your area? He's always over like... Turkmenistan or something. I guess he's just working really hard. He'll probably fly over. He'll probably fly over the U.S. in a minute. In a minute here. Well, actually, it's not Christmas Day yet, so. Dude, his gift rate is insane. It's like he's not even going down the uh, the chimney or anything. It's just it's just there. View Santa's route on a 2D map. Oh, they spotted him. God, chat. Surely he's going to be making his way to the U.S. soon, right? All right, lock in. How long are you streaming for today? Probably like four hours. Ooh, what anime is that? But I'm not streaming tomorrow. Oh, it, no, it, it's, uh, it's, it's, it's nothing. It's just a silly hobby. <laughs> you know... Ma'am, get your hands off my fucking car, please. Thank you. I just wondered what it would be like to ride in a Rolls Royce. Oh, no. Uh, actually. Uh, roll the window up. Uh, you got one of those crank windows? Turn the car on. This is... This is not... This is... Uh, You were saying. What did his text message say? I really hope you're going to bring someone. It's time to settle down, Drew. If I got a text from my fucking parents that were like, you better bring somebody to Christmas. I'd be like, fuck you. <laughs> fuck off. Oh my god. Getting on your shit like that? That'd be, like, insane. Yeah, who the hell would say that? Are you ever gonna get, like, a... Are you ever gonna get a girlfriend? I mean, like, you're, like, 30. Like, damn, dude. It's their fucking life. All right. Uh, you were saying... She has ball sack eyelids too. Don't make fun of me. Um. So does he. What are you doing on Christmas Eve? I guess hanging out with you. Yeah. I'm Holly, by the way. Drew. I yeah. wouldn't even think she's a gold digger. I would honestly just immediately assume that if she is she pulls up to my car and is immediately willing to go anywhere with me that I want. 
I'm I'm just flat out thinking that's a prostitute. Like I'm like who who in their right mind, gold digger or not, would be like, I'm just gonna get in this random man's car that I've never met in my entire life just based off the fact that he drives something expensive. Like you're just immediately trusting him with your life. Like that is terrifying. Yeah, maybe I can Yeah, of course. Yeah. <laughs> Like, she's just going to get into his car. Oh, no, she's giving him his phone number. Wow. <laughs> Who does that? They could kill you? Well, prostitutes. That's why I said, like, like they, they don't have the choice on whether or not they're going to trust that individual. Uh, hello? So oh, sorry, sir. Yes, right this way. Yeah. Rep. <laughs> she's acting... She's acting like he's like a dickhead for lying to her when she only wanted to talk to him because he had a nice car. Hey, Holly, why don't you go over there and make us some protein shakes you know, for the trainers? Got to take care of my boys. <laughs> Thanks. Why are they acting like personal trainers are rich? When personal trainers make like 40K a year, like maybe, maybe less depending because you're working, you're working training rates. Like she, like they're, they're like, I, I think that might be the point is that like they're making her do things for them and they also just don't make that much. He could be a personal hey, butler and he would make a bag. That is true. I just came to say sorry about He's not yesterday. just a chauffeur. For How the life. fuck did he find where she is? How did he find where she works? Lying to me? I didn't lie. Look. Okay, look, look, look. I'm not some mega millionaire who owns a Rolls Royce. I don't live in a mansion or have some lavish lifestyle. Nice name tag, Holly. Why don't you get back? Why don't you get back to cleaning the fucking desk? I'm a chauffeur. I, I make twenty six an hour, and I have a one bedroom. Oh my god! What do you just tell her? Tell her your entire life story. Why don't you? Fuck. I I make twenty six an hour. I paid this in taxes last year. This is where I live, and this is how this is the square footage of my house. Apartment. <laughs> but I. What the fuck? Still like to take you out on a date. <laughs> if... Joe, do you know what's going on with Twitch in the just chatting area? Oh, you're talking about this. With Twitch in the just chat. Thank you guys for the hype train. You've collected all the level one amounts. We need to like get a level three or higher. <laughs> so you get a new one. Uh yeah. Yeah, it's like uh it's like a new trend from the uh new TOS. Dude, it's like noon on Christmas Eve and motherfuckers just got motherfuckers just be doing this shit on Twitch. It's like, I feel like it's like half of just chatting now is like just borderline nudity. Men and women. Nah, whatever. Uh, Zab for the sub, Azcap for the fucking thousand biddies, the dirt for the fucking five gifteds. Santa is real because the shops are closed at night, so how can my parents go get gifts? Like Santa, duh. Yeah, facts. And then it's also, it's also just like, Santa just really understands the economy because he gives proportionately cheaper gifts to uh, low-income families. It's like he really understands how the economy works. So it's just like, like it's just it's like shocking how like like people that have like millionaire parents are getting like really expensive gifts, and people that like don't make that much money are giving like maybe one two gifts. You know, it's like it's like he knows that. Zero for the three. Thank you for all the great content. Enjoy your holiday. I see for the three. My dad died on the ninth. I haven't been able to watch your streams or your tech talks uh, have made me laugh. Well, rip in the chat for uh, Icy Trips uh, dad. Uh, or Icy Trips dad. Uh, and I mean, I'm glad my tech talks have made you laugh. Uh, and I'm sorry you're going through that, man. I hope the morning process goes well. Uh, Jay-Z for the three. Pretend this is 10K biddies. Thank you for the 300 biddies. Uh, Jay-Z for the sub. Uh, or not for the sub, for the bets. I leave for the three. I had a dream while we were in a Fortnite desert. You were talking about your situationship with Ralph from Wreck-It Ralph. 
and how Ralph wanted an actual relationship, but you just wanted to stay friends. That's a very in detail. You had a dream that I was talking to you in the Fortnite desert about how Wreck-It Ralph wanted to date me, but I just wanted to be friends. I don't, I really don't, I don't believe that. Money for the sub, uh, Michael for the three. What's your favorite, top three favorite Christmas movies? We'll get into that when we do the, the tier list thing. Foxman for the three. Let's add the crack shot cabin to reacts. What is the crack shot cabin? Wrong video. <laughs> visit uh, how to easily visit Crack Shot Cabin. Uh, bro, how did Fiddledinks already have the YouTube video queue? Is this is this old? Oh yeah, I was gonna say I remember this. Wow, this is like nostalgic. He was in a fucking Truman Show! They did a Truman Show! All right, Michael uh, for the three, Foxman for the three, Vertical for the five, ten biddies. Polar Express is one of the best Christmas movies of all time. It is. Vertical for the five, ten biddies. Uh, Stiz for the five. You should 1v1 Jinxie in R6. I don't know if he would. Mr. C for the three. I didn't want to upset you. Don't be insecure. I'm not, dude, I, I'm not actually upset. Uh, Dedirt for the five, Gifted SVT for the sub. Uh, Hydro for the five, ten biddies. Merry Christmas from Australia, 125 in the morning right now. Merry Christmas. Uh, anybody struggling, you're not alone. Help is always available. Facts. One kick for the sub, Debbie, for the three. Uh, you should do that kind of just chatting. No, Lance, for the three. First time, uh, or first stream, Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Tamaris for the 50. What the fuck? Thank you for the $50 dono, Tamaris underscore 84. Merry Christmas, Joe plus chat. Have a great day tomorrow. My username is Tamaris84 if it doesn't show. Well, thank you for the fucking 50, and it did show. I don't know why it doesn't sometimes. So thank you for the fucking 50, Tamaris. Happy, happy fucking holidays, dude. Uh, 413 Tommy for the three. Can we play rock, paper, scissors? If you win, I'll give 10 subs. Wait, ready? 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Rock, rock, paper, scissors, shoot, paper. Bang. Because I knew he was going to go rock because he assumed that I was going to go scissors. 413 for the three. Uh, love for the 340. Uh... Merry Christmas, y'all. I don't know if it's a lot, but uh, I don't have a lot of money on me right now. Dude, I appreciate any amount. Thank you for the fucking three. And if you don't have a lot of money, don't feel the pressure to donate. You don't need to. Uh, I appreciate anybody that just watches. Stiz for the three. You missed my biddies 10 minutes ago. Uh, I should have just uh, read them. I don't know if I did, though. 413 Tommy for the 10 gifteds. There's zero chance I won that. Twice in a row. Midnight for the thousand biddies. Merry Christmas. Figured I'd share uh, some love with the only Twitch streamer I like. Found you on YouTube and downloaded Twitch just to watch your streams. Love you, man. I will donate uh, as much as I can. You don't need to. Oh, I said I already know I don't have to, but you deserve it. Thank you. Dawson for the sub. Uh, Cakes for the four. Uh, and Midnight. Thank you for the fucking thousand buddies. And 413 Tommy for the 10 gifted Snoop for the sub. Thank you guys for the fucking donuts. I appreciate that shit. All right. Are we ready to lot? Are we ready? Not ready. 
are we ready to lock back in uh, for the video chat? Everybody lock in. Type locked in. Type locked in. Type locked in. Got a little distracted. Don't even remember where the video ended off. Got to lock back in. Here we are. Hold up. My chat's glitching. It's good. We're locked. We're only two minutes into the video. Yikes. 6-0 for the sub. If you're willing to give me a second chance. <laughs> why does he want to be... Why does he want to date her? First trying to impress me with a car that isn't yours. And now you're going with some sob story? I never said it was my car. You certainly never said it wasn't. You have a sugar daddy waiting? Nah. Yeah. How much he paying though? Sugar daddy meat. Oh, wow. You, you, you're giving me a hard time and you're, you're on some sugar daddy website. Don't act like you're some angel either, Holly. The only reason you're interested in me is because you thought I'd drive a nice car. You were just looking for another rich guy so you could get a Gucci bag. That's pathetic. Hey, watch it. You don't know anything about me. You're right. I don't. And I don't want to either. Let's just pretend we never met. Good. Yeah, great. Yeah, how much do you think they pay in on SugarDaddyMeat.com? Fantastic. Probably a bag. <sighs> $500 for a toe rub. Hi, Mommy. <gasps> Hi, my princess. I'm hungry. Didn't you eat with your dad? No. You didn't feed her? No. You asked me to watch her while you were at work. You didn't say anything about feeding her. You're her dad, Gabe. I only asked you to watch her because I'm at work and my mom can't. Don't you think... I don't need another one of your lectures. All right, this is why I left you. If you can't appreciate me, then don't ask me to watch her next time. It's your fucking kid. Nah, now I'm about to go off on a fucking rant. That just pissed me off. Yo, I don't give a fuck what scenario you are in, right? If you have a kid and you refuse to have an abortion, and you have that child, you better be a damn good parent. Even if you're in a financial struggle, you at least gotta be there for your fucking kid, right? If you ain't gonna get an abortion, and you're gonna have the fucking child, be a good dad. Flat out. Let's go get you something to eat, huh? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, come on. We're gonna go get some food. Yeah. Isn't that illegal now? Really abortion? Hungry? No. See, bro, I hate. Oh my god, abortion is not illegal. Maybe in your state, right? Most states, abortion, you could still get an abortion, like no problem. Like you just ring up, hey, can I get like New Jersey at least? New Jersey, at least, yeah, it ain't a problem, right? Maybe in whatever state you live in, but it was ne it used to be federally protected. Now it's not, right? So it's up to the state's discretion on whether or not they would allow it. Uh, that's what that whole news shit with the fucking Supreme Court was about. Yeah. Put the kid up for adoption. I'm not going to get into a whole abortion argument right now. Obviously, I am pro-choice. Um, if you're pro-life, that's that's your own decision, right? But I, I just personally think it's it's kind of your thing. I'm not I'm not going to get into that. But the the whole the whole idea of just putting it up for adoption is kind of um, uh, like like rough, right? Like I I know, and people are saying, well, well, you're you're going to kill the kid, all that other stuff, uh, if if you get an abortion, but. Um, I kind of have my own thoughts on, on the fact that that is like a two-cell non-human, right? Because what would define somebody as human doesn't exist in those characteristics within that, um, cellular ball of nothing that at, at that point, at that moment, yes, it will become a human, but it currently isn't at that moment. And Hey, I like, it, it, I know if you disagree with me, I like, I, I know a lot of people are going to say L here because I know a lot of people are pro-life that's on you. Like I'm not. I'm, I'm honestly not trying to, like, have an argument right now. I'm just sharing my own opinion. The whole uh, put it up for adoption thing, um, 
yeah, like you could say that, but I mean, saying like instead of having an abortion, just wait the nine months, have the kid, and then imme immediately give it up with a chance that they might not find a home and then get put in foster care and have a terrible life. Like you're saying, oh well, in response to that, they might not have no, li they have, they may have no life, but they they wouldn't, they're not a conscious being at that moment. They don't have organs. Like I, I I'll agree that if it's like later in the trimester, you should have that kid. Like, I, I think that's, like, that's a whole different argument, right? But if you're, like, three weeks pregnant, it, it's not, it, there's no, or it's not even discernibly alive. It's just a thing. Uh, XX for the three. 413 for the three. What should I get my mom for Christmas? Uh, buddy, it's kind of late for deciding what you want to get your mom for Christmas. Uh, Christmas is in, like, 12 hours. So, uh, maybe hop on over to the Walmart, get a nice Christmas card, put a... Starbucks gift card into it. Uh, cause I don't really know what you're going to do there. Uh, <laughs> I, you're kind of thinking late, late to the game here. You know, what did you get Brooke for Christmas? I'm not, I'm not going to tell you guys because then you're, you guys are somehow going to like inform her in her comment section or something. So she does know one thing I got her. Okay. I'll tell, I'll share one thing that I got her because she already knows I got her a vinyl like a record. I got her like 10 different things, but that's like, she knew, she knew it was a vinyl because you know how, what you know how a vinyl's really thin and square. It, if you wrap it, it's obviously a vinyl. It, so it's just like, she was looking at the presents I wrapped her and most were boxes. Right. But uh, <laughs> one of them is this thin square thing and she picks it up. Was it Taylor Swift? It's not a Taylor Swift vinyl. She thinks it's a Taylor Swift vinyl. It's not. She already has like 10 Taylor Swift vinyls. I already got her fucking three. I'm not, I'm not getting her another one. I got her a different one. Um, I'm not going to tell you guys though, but it is a vinyl. What else did I get her? Fuck. I want to tell my chat. Should I tell you guys? No, because I know, I know somebody's going to tell her. I know somebody's going to tell her. Uh, all right. I'll tell you, I'll tell you guys something. I'll tell you guys like a, a gag gift. I got her. Not even a gag gift. It's just like the worst gift I got her. I got her a $10 desk fan. Because I sleep with white noise. And if I'm ever hanging out with her, it's like dead silent in her room. And I hate it. So I got her a, I got her a $10 desk fan. Just so there's like the... Like, do you guys sleep with noise or nothing? I can't sleep with nothing. Because then if there is noise, I'll wake up. So I got her something that will just go like, shh, you know what I mean? Like almost like white noise, but it's also a fan. So it's like kind of useful. So you bought it for you. Yeah. <laughs> yes. That's why I'm sharing the gift. Cause it's the worst gift I got her. It's something, it's a gift I got her that I, that I would rather have. <laughs> that's why, that's why I'm letting you guys know it's the worst. It's the worst gift I've ever gotten. Um, no, but I got her that. Oh, dude, I forgot. Oh, fuck. I wanted to show you guys. I went to uh, a friend's miss yesterday. Somebody got me a cool Zippo lighter. And I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll show it if I go take a piss this stream. Uh, Kixlin, uh, Lucid for the sub Fox man for the three. I got myself a life-size spider Gwen pillow. And <laughs> Jake for the five, Tamaris for the three. I was wondering if you're ever going to do a suicide prevention charity stream again. Yeah. Uh, I did one on for Suicide Prevention Day, but I'll probably do another one in like February or March, like every like a six month type thing. I just I'm jamming a bunch this um this upcoming January. I'm gonna do one for leukemia, and then I'm doing one for well that the leukemia is the later January one, and then I'm doing one for the head um neck and cancer uh or head neck head neck cancer alliance. I think it's H H N C A. Uh, Tavares for the three. Uh, sorry for ruining the mood. You're not ruining the mood. 413 for the three. You should run for president. You got to be 35. Kickstand for the sub. Stizzy for the three. As somebody who was adopted at birth, I'm grateful I wasn't aborted. The odds uh, you have of being born are so slim and it would suck not to get a, to experience life. Yes, I agree. But I, I mean, like my counterpoint, I'm not I'm not supporting like anybody. At, if you if you have a kid at a young age, you should abort it. No, I think it's I think it's your choice. Right. I, that's, that's just my, my genuine opinion. I'm a man. I don't have children, right? I mean, I would take part in the action of having a child, 
but it, it, at the end of the day, it's it's a woman's body that is deciding whether or not they want to harbor a possible person for nine months, have that kid, and then maybe raise it or give it give it away, right? So, I mean, I understand your point, and I, I mean, I'm glad you're here. I'm, I'm not trying to diss you. I'm not saying that you should have been aborted. You, you should be alive. You should be here. But I don't want to take the freedom of a mother uh, away uh, on deciding whether or not they want to have that kid is, is what my point is. Uh, I understand the arguments against it, um, but in my mind, I can't get past the fact that it would effectively be forcing somebody to spend nine months harboring a kid for uh, possibly even accidentally getting pregnant, even if they took the steps to not get pregnant, right? You can use condoms and birth control and all this other shit, and then you could still get pregnant. I think it'd be a little bit unfair to force somebody to have that child uh, if they did not want to, right? Is that so that's my point. All right, lock in, chat. Can we get back into the video? Uh, have you ever been to upstate New York? Said Ellie, no. Uh, XXDs for the three, 413 for the three. Uh, 413 for the three. What do I tell if I, what do I do if my girlfriend hates my, if my girlfriend's mom hates me for no reason? Try and get her to like you and maybe ask why, but then you're kind of being confrontational. Chef for the sub play, boy for the three. Happy holidays, uh, Joe. Uh, each bit is how many times I got timed out for spamming <laughs> and being a VIP. Thank you. It's been a good year. Uh, yeah, you have gotten timed out a lot. All right, lock in. Chat, honestly, like, I'm not trying to start an argument or anything. Like, I, I was just sharing my own personal opinion. I, like, I, if, if you are pro-life or poor choice, I respect both opinions, right? I understand the points behind both. I'm just sharing what I personally believe, okay? Uh, all right, lock in. Because I'm not going to be one of those fucking streamers. Like, I, I'm sorry if this pisses you guys off, but I'd rather be a streamer that pisses you off with my opinion than be a streamer that refuses to share my opinion out of me being too controversial, you know? Like, I'm just going to fucking say what I think. You can disagree with me, but I'm not going to sit here as a personality-less person and just be an entertainer. All right, lock in. <laughs> ah, the old car won't start. Leave me alone. I don't want to talk to you. Look, okay. Have fun walking home. Get back in my car. I didn't know you had a daughter. Yeah, like I said. You don't know anything about my life. You're right. I don't. And, and, and I'm really sorry about what I said earlier. Who was that guy? Some deadbeat dad that barely helps with anything. Hey, pop your hood. I'll pull my car around. I'm sorry, too. You were right. I am looking for a rich guy. But not Maybe 26 an hour is enough. You're right. I am looking for a rich guy. And maybe, maybe, maybe 26, maybe 26 an hour could get us by. Are you willing to pick up overtime? Not by choice. My original goal was to be a personal trainer. I got my certification in everything. But when I asked my boss for a promotion, How much do you make an hour? I don't have an hourly wage. Um, because I'm not getting paid by like I'm not getting paid an hourly rate wage by YouTube, Twitch, or TikTok. It's based on how my content performs. Said no. Because nobody here wants a female trainer. I didn't know what else to do. With the $15 an hour that I make here, I could barely pay rent. I haven't even been able to get a present for my baby girl for Christmas. So that's the reason I, you know, I signed up for that site. I figured getting paid to go on dates beats my baby girl being hungry, you know? I actually think I have a solution for both of our problems. Just takes the kid out of the car and football spikes it on the ground. Hey. 
<laughs> You're good now. Okay, so all I have to Yo, that would be insane if that was a Dharma video. It just ends right there. To do is act like we're together to make your family happy. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it. And, and I'll, I'll pay you as soon as we get back. I don't know why you care so much about what your family thinks, but I guess it's not my problem. I get nervous when flying, so I'm just going to try and sleep. Oh, yeah. <laughs> just starts fucking throwing up. Oh, what a gentleman. Oh, what a gentleman. Oh, chat, what a gentleman. Thanks. Sleeping on a plane make me making me feel like I'm paralyzed sometimes. Dude, I, like, you ever fall asleep on a plane like this? And then you wake up, and then you wake up, and you can't pick up your head. And you kind of start panicking. Like, you fall asleep like this for, like, an hour. And you wake up, and your head's so heavy, and you're numb. And you're like... <laughs> and, then, and then your head feels like it weighs, like, a thousand pounds. All right, just just to warn you, my family can be a bit. Uh... Drew, welcome home. Oh goodness. Mm. Oh, and who's this? <laughs> I thought you were joking when you said you were gonna bring a girl home. Oh, and how pretty are you? Would you look at that. I'm Drew's mom, Lisa Johnson. What's your name, sweetie? I'm Holly. It's oh, nice to meet you. It's nice to meet you, Holly. Uh, Holly. Don't. Don't, don't give her your full name. My mom's a little investigator. I am not. Stop it. Don't listen to him, please. Come on in, guys. Yeah, just send the file. I'll take a look at it. Yeah, <laughs> yes. we need to iron this out before the new year. Thanks, Susan. <laughs> there That's the worst painting I've ever seen in a fucking house. Oh, my God, dude. That is literally just... <laughs> what the fuck? Is that a flag or is that a painting? It's abstract art. Dude, but it's literally just... It, I mean, it could be a flag because it's three colors, but it's like fucking hell, man. That's literally just three... It's just it's just three stripes of color. Thanks, Susan. <laughs> there he is. Hi, right, son. Good to see ya. Wow. That's Yugoslavia. I don't think that's the... I don't think that's the Yugoslavia flag. I'm surprised we didn't have to buy you a ticket this year. Being a valet pays better than I thought. <laughs> I'm actually a chauffeur. Is there a difference? <laughs> uh, yeah, a valet uh, grabs people's keys and parks their car. A chauffeur takes people places. Oh, guess what? Your brother. Lotus, thank you for the five gift ads. His career has really taken off. He hit 10,000 followers on Instagram. Wow. <laughs> that's, uh, that's my other son, Craig. Uh, he's flying in tonight. Craig? Studied psychiatry at Harvard. Top of the class. <laughs> he published a book that made it to the New York Times bestseller list. You can have it all. How to be smart, successful, and have a happy marriage. He is amazing. Th that's a lot. Yeah, well, honey, I'm sure you guys are tired, so why don't you go on back? Yo, where's your kid? Drew, we said it. Yeah, like, like it, it, yo, we're in the car. It's in the car. Dude, with the dad. Dude, they just showed the dad not feeding her, and then they're going to leave her with the, they're going to leave the, the, the fucking kid with the dad for like a week. Put up your old room. Go on back and relax while I finish dinner. Oh, All he right? killed it. Yeah, yeah, on the ground, crushed. All right, thank you. <laughs> oh, you can leave those here, honey. I'll take them back for you. Yeah. Thank you. Sure. Oh, nah. Oh, nah. That's, like, creepy. <laughs> like, 
just like snooping on snooping on their fucking suitcase oh, oh, info please. to figure uh, out who they those. are. You got real talent, Drew. I don't understand why you haven't done anything with this. That was a dream. It was to Deku. You know, go to art. Deku. Art school and be an animator. Uh, reality, that's, that's just one big waste of time. Is that what your family tells you? You need to relax. You're overreacting, Chloe. No, I'm not. You're always trying to gaslight me, Cred. That's my brother. Doesn't seem like that happy couple on the cover of that book. Back. Seems a bit hypocritical. Welcome to my family. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I wouldn't call Drew my boyfriend yet, at least, but, um, yeah, that's how we met outside of my gym. She about to tell him a kiss. That's cute. And which gym was it again? Oh, um, it's the one that's in between... Really, Chloe? You not gonna put none on my plate? If you wanted some, you could have just asked. Do you... Oh my god! Most awkward shit in the world. Most awkward shit in the world. You're sitting at the family dinner table and two people just start kind of going at it and you're like... Yeah, anyways, uh, the OG Fortnite season was pretty good. Um... <laughs> you're just fucking waiting for him to stop and then everybody just starts staring at him. You're like, dude, come on. Asking me to pay the bills? No. Yo, I get that people have arguments, but if you're going to have an argument at a dinner table, like a private argument at a family dinner table in front of everybody, that's, that's cuck shit. That's so annoying. Like, I, I don't care if t 10 years in the future, I'm so mad, like at the dinner table, dude, I'm waiting, I'm waiting for that shit to fucking end or go into a different room, talk about it and then, and then go back out. You know, take it outside, come back. I just do it. Oh. Oh. Is everything okay, Dad? Just shut uh, up, turtle neck. Uh, putting out fires as always. Could have wait till after dinner. It's Christmas Eve, you know. Hey, they can't expect you to respond now, right? <laughs> See, you know your problem is. You don't know about work ethic. When I was dog, you are wearing a turtleneck with a fucking suit jacket. Mm, settle down, settle down, buddy. I'm about to start. I'm about to start swinging at the fit. Becoming a VP. Do you think I took off weekends and holidays? No. What about your brother? How do I unmake mustard gas, Joe? Just breathe. Just breathe in a lot of it. No, don't do that. You can't unmake mustard gas. Just close out the room. Turn on the ventilation. Probably leave, probably leave the house until it fucking goes away. How did he become a successful bookseller? Huh? Did you work nine to five? Nah, more like 24 seven. Exactly. If you want to be successful, you have to work hard. Something you know nothing about. Drew works hard. Yeah, if, if he isn't driving his clients around, he is always working on his art. Oh, don't even get me started about that giant waste of time. <laughs> so that's what you're doing now, little bro? You're driving people around. What's so funny? <laughs> Yo, I am fist fighting my family right there and then. I'm saying, I always say violence is the last answer. But if you got your own family coming at your throat like that, oh, it's done, bro. There ain't going to be another family Christmas. Yeah, I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be fucking fist fighting. Let me paint a picture for you. I'm gonna lunge over the table and just fucking grab his chain. I am a VP of a major corporation. Your brother is a best-selling author. Oh my god, yo, I hate when people brag. Okay, I obviously yeah, becoming a best-selling author is hard as fuck. Am I wrong in saying every goddamn book was a New York Times bestseller? A fucking something bestseller. Whenever I'm at a fucking BAM bookstore, they always got that fucking stupid ass sticker. Bestseller. Bitch, you could have been a bestseller for one day and you're going to shove that fucking sticker on there. You could be dead broke and have a fucking New York Times bestseller. You are a valet. Don't you see how that's kind of funny? Now, you know what? 
Maybe I should get you a copy of my book. You could learn to think it too, man. That's a great idea, Craig. I'm sure Drew could learn a lot from your book. And you know, there's a few chapters in there about- Shut up, mom! Relationships. Yeah. You don't get me. Maybe if you read it, you can actually get Holly to be your girlfriend. Okay, you know what? That is enough. What is wrong with all of you? You're his family. Don't you care about how what you're saying is affecting him? Guess we know who wears the pants in this relationship. <laughs> your wife's cheating on you. <laughs> your wife's cheating. Your wife is ba your wife is b b banging other people. Oh, I'd say that. I'd be. I'd say that off rip. I'd say your wife is a hundred percent gonna leave you. Buddy, buddy, get back to me in 10 years when you're paying alimony. Exactly. Fucking Even more bag. reason Drew needs to read my book. You know what, Holly? You should read it too. I bet you'll love it. Okay, New York listen. Times bestseller. Yeah, I can't wait for some of that to be going away. In here, Harvard. I'd rather get relationship advice from a fortune cookie than your worthless bestseller. And you're not fooling me. Bro said I found some dirt on her. Your smiling cover and your like fancy degree. And you're not fooling anyone either, Missy. Is this you? Is she <gasps> your daddy dating website? Are you investigating me? No, 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 no. You don't get to flip this around on me. Are you paying for her to be here? No, no, I, uh, sure. Drew, do not lie to us. Wow, this is good. Not only are you insulting me. Like, I uh, hate this so much. I hate this so much. It's pissing me off so much. Sure. You using men to fund your little shopping sprees? Aren't you gonna say anything? Well, at least I know the One Piece manga. Bad comeback. Wait, no, Holly, wait. Well, we knew him bringing a girl here was just too good to be true. Too good to be true, <laughs> man. <laughs> Holly, Holly, please, please, wait, wait. I stood up for you, and you just sat there and watched them attack me. Oh, no, no, no. It's not that I didn't want to defend you. It... It's that I... I don't know how to stand up to my family. I've n I've never even stood up for myself. Yo, why don't you take that Deku advice? Why don't you take that Deku advice? All Might. He told me one day I'd have to use I'd have to use one for all. Now is my chance. You want to know why? It's time to go. Ah! Plus Ultra! I, I've never shown my heart to anyone. It's because my family... Activating Brass Knuckles! Ah! <laughs> Just fucking nails him. It's constantly drilling into me that it's a waste of time and that it will never amount to anything. They, 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 they've, they've always called my dreams a joke. You know, like my mom? She constantly, she constantly makes me feel like, like no one will ever date me. And then my dad, he makes me feel like a failure. And then they both, they constantly compare me to my brother. It's been like that since I remember. You see. Yo, where are your money spread at, little dog? <laughs> Yo. Why don't you get your stacks up then, little bro? <laughs> and then he said, you see. Oh, God, we got the fucking flashback. When we were kids, my parents were always so proud of Craig. The fridge was covered in his accomplishments. But when he came... Posting a multiple choice A plus on the fridge is nuts. ...into anything I did... They never cared. They only focused on my weakness. My parents were always into the sports he'd play and the extracurriculars he did. Rather than caring about anything I was good at, all they do is rave about him. 
Mm. Okay, he's just wearing a suit jacket to wear a suit jacket at this point. Like, what the fuck? And as if things weren't already bad enough, after Craig got into Harvard, they got even worse. All the attention would be on him times 10. I, I remember constantly wondering why I wasn't good enough. So you see. <laughs> it's been like that. Since so, I can remember. So you see. And I thought. I Damn, thought, she hit him. She hit him with that fucking white person smile. That. <laughs> she hit him with that shit. You walk past somebody. You're... And I thought. I thought maybe bringing you here. Would change things. Why was I wrong? Just like my art. How can you possibly see your art as a failure? You know, I never even got into art school. Like they never. Oh my God! Just start. Just start drawing, dude. Just start drawing like furry fetish shit for people and sell it at a premium. Never wrote me back. After You'll make a bag. You'll make a bag. After I applied. Okay. But besides that, has anyone other than your family ever told you your art is bad? No, I, I hadn't shown anyone else. I thought about, you know, posting it online, but no. But, yeah, <laughs> Fortnite drawings, dude, literally. Because you're worried about what the world would think? Draw Renegade Raider in risque clothing and sell it for like 300 fucking dollars. You're worried about your family? I mean, Drew, do you have any idea how good this is? It's amazing. Don't let anyone ever tell you otherwise. Hey, when I first met you, you drew Zenitsu, right? You know anime? Are you kidding me? I'm obsessed. I mean, to be honest, it's one of the things that interested me even more than your car. <laughs> <laughs> Let me ask you this. Zenitsu is a super talented and strong dragon slayer, right? Mm -hmm. What's his character flaw? Um, he is chlamydia. considers himself useless, mm -hmm. low self-esteem. Yes. And that's just like you and your art. Yo, they should make an anime where they're like their kryptonite is like syphilis or something like that. He's the most powerful. He's the most powerful villain in the world. All that's stopping him is he has genital herpes. So talented, but you don't see it because of this narrative that your family has told you. That's why I think it's time for you to finally- Dragon Slayer? I don't think they're allowed to say Demon Slayer, chat. I think it might be a copyright thing. Stand up for yourself. It, it's just, it's, it's easier said than done. No, it's not. Why didn't you stand up for yourself when your boss told you you couldn't be a personal trainer? Yeah, maybe you're right. I should have. But we're talking about you right now. Would you rather spend the rest of your life worrying about your family's approval or going after your dreams? What are you doing? Posting about how amazing your artwork is on Instagram. If you're not gonna do it, I will. Oh. Check out how amazing my friend Drew's artwork is. Oh, please, please. Eight likes. Please don't. Too late. <laughs> Eight likes, one comment. I reposted it. Check it out. Mm. Oh, look. It's already got a comment. Instagram better tear him up. Nah, that's for real, though. In the comment section, it's just like, 
This shit's trash. <laughs> this shit's trash. He's so talented. Buddy, buddy, put down the pencil. Wanted. You got a gift, Drew. Don't waste it because you're worried about Dude, other. The funniest shit is when you when you're on Instagram Reels and it's like, it's like a wholesome post, and you look at the comment section and it's like, get your money up, Lil, and then it says the it says, it says the N word, but it's like literally like a ten year old kid showing his like cat in the hat drawing and they're like show us your money spread then their people's approval it's time for you to finally stand up for yourself because if you don't stand up for yourself in life no one else ever will he just sometimes goes out there i wonder if he's even really family. our son oh hey little bro oh yeah she definitely she definitely don't like him I got a book for you, man, and I signed it. Consider it your Christmas present. And you may want to skip to chapter three. It's all about finding the right partner, not some cheap girl for hire. That's enough. I'm not going to let you talk to me and Holly like that. Whoa, 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 whoa. Holly and I speak proper English. You know, it's kind of ironic that you always want to give the world advice when your own marriage is in shambles? Yeah! Yup! Yeah! Yup! Yup! Lay into him! You and Chloe do is argue. So you, you treat her more like your servant than your wife. Stop trying to sell this picture-perfect life to the world. In reality, it's just one big lie. At least he doesn't have to pay for his girl to be here. You know, moving forward, son, I'm gonna find a very nice girl for you. Stop talking about Holly like that, Mom. You don't know her. Why would I trust you to play matchmaker? You're the one who pressured Craig into this unhappy marriage. Hey, watch your tone, son. I mean, you should talk. You drive people around for a living. When you become successful, then you get to give advice. Success, you-, you Nice hairline, Dad! Uh Having success does not mean having money, Dad. Like you, you, you can't even put your phone down for more than five you seconds. You got that McDonald's logo on your fucking head. Yeah, he just got like a background person to come in. It's to enjoy our Christmas Eve dinner. Working twenty four seven is not success, Dad. It's prison. If I knew you were going to be ungrateful and let you waste your time in art school. Yeah, maybe we should have. What are you talking about? You weren't rejected from art school. We hid your acceptance letter because we didn't want you to waste your life with those silly doodles. Yet, you managed to do that anyway. Whoa. Yeah. Kick the dad in the face. Nah, that's fucking nuts. The only waste of time was coming here for dinner. You guys take care, all right? Holly and I are leaving. Come on, let's go, Holly. Drew. Hey, Drew, you want the book? Still? Hey. Yo, the fact that the brother ain't defending him, though, like, I feel like you gotta defend your, like, your sibling, you know? Especially after the brother heard that, like, they just hid the fact that he got into art school. Allergic for the sub turkey for the fucking five gifted. Thank you, Turkey Kern, for the five gifted sub. Thank you, for the sub. Thank you for the five gifted. Mr. K9 for the sub BTX for the three. Can you stare into the camera for a few seconds? No. Abdul for the three. <gasps> Merry Christmas and God bless you and your family. Thank you. Uh, Merry Christmas to you as well. Uh, XDG and I am Ian for the sub E Town for the sub Grinch for the thousand buddies. UGN for the sub Evil for the three. Are you going to move in with your girlfriend? What, Brooke? I mean, at some point, yeah, but we're both still in college, so probably not yet, no. Um, void for the sub. Uh, sometime after, yeah. Lotus for the five gifteds. Thank you for the five gifteds, Lotus. George for the three. My opinion is that we should just abort every child. The lines at Target are too long at ready. Oh, my God. <laughs> Foxman for the three. He's definitely a hentai artist on the side. Ellie for the three. Never mind, maybe she is a victim. Shaq for the sub. Panda for the three. Lotus for the sub. Ellie for the three. Uh, Shep for the sub. All right. Shoji for the three. Now I'm beating everybody's ass if you hide my acceptance letter. Yeah, that's fucked. Turkey for the thousand, but he's got your merch in the mail. It's super comfortable. Dub. Merry Christmas to you and all of chat. 
Uh, you up for the four. Recently discovered about you. Your streams are fun to watch. You're a W streamer. Thank you. I am so proud of you for standing up for yourself. Thanks. Now it's your turn. Hey, Holly, once you get done cleaning, uh, make us some protein shakes, all right? Actually, you can make them yourself. Because I'm quitting. What? What's this? My resignation. I'm going to apply to this other gym that has lots of female trainers. Maybe they'll see my worth since you clearly can't. All right, I don't want to be that guy, but this spot at the gym gets filled up so fast. It's really not like she, like her spot, like she doesn't have, okay, I really don't want to be a dick. But like at my own gym, the front desk motherfucker changes every two weeks. But not like changing like shift wise, like they get a new person. Like it, like that job gets filled so fast. Cause you just sit there like that. Your job is sit there, clean shit and make sure people scan their, their fob before they come in. Like they, it, because you'd be yelling. It's not cause I'd be yelling. It's because the job, the job's just boring, but it's easy. It's not planet fitness. Is it? They've been taken on. Unless my... it's a manager, like a man, a, like a manager role is different, but the front desk person mainly just sits there and makes sure that everybody like get, has what they need. There's clean shit. And then it's just like, did you scan your, did you scan it? Are you a member here? I'm going to apply to this other gym that has lots of female trainers. Maybe they'll see my worth since you clearly can't. It's not Planet Fitness, is it? They've been taking all my clients. Taking my staff, too. Oh. Kind of them stealing my... Look, 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 just, just wait a second. Let's talk about this. Uh, Best please. gym you could work at is an Equinox. You work there, bro, the train... I think the monthly membership at Equinox is like fucking 200. Equinox membership cost. It varies by location. The Equinox in London is $375 a month. Like, that's insane. Like, that, like that's so expensive. Like, an average gym would be like 20 to 40. It really varies on location, though, how big it is, because they have different things. If you want multiple Equinox locations in the U.S., an all-access membership is $3,000 a year. Like, that's so much. I pay 50 a month. Yeah, most people pay anywhere between 20 and 40, but there are ones that are, like, nicer that are, like, 50, 60, maybe. Please, don't, don't go. <clears throat> look, look, Holly, Holly. What's it going to take to make you stay? Please. So, what is that fit? So, your plan worked. I got promoted to trainer. Yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh, I'm so happy for you. Are they like a thing now? <laughs> and guess what? Thanks to you, check it out. I just got an offer to be a full-time animator at Disney. Bro be drawing cartoons in a fucking notebook. And, and and she posts that shit on Instagram. And you're telling me, you're telling me oh, like two days later. Like two days later, Disney hits Disney hits his line and says, Yeah, we're gonna pay you to be a full-time animator. Get the fuck out of here. I guess they no so experience, no art school. He just has cool drawings. I art online ever since the Instagram's been growing, so they reached out and can you believe it? I didn't need art school after all. That's amazing, Drew. <laughs> You're gonna do incredible things. <laughs> well, um, I gotta go. I gotta pick up my daughter. Uh, actually, I was, I was hoping I could come with you. Ooh. I, I actually, uh. He shoots. I got an early Christmas gift for her. I just wanted to give it to her. And if you guys aren't busy, maybe we could go out to dinner. Yeah, my treat, of course, just, you know, as a thank you for believing in me. I would like that a lot, actually. And we could split the check. Ah! 
Actually, I thought you'd be paying this time. Uh, actually, seeing that I paid for your flight uh, to my to my family trip, nah, I thought you would be paying this one. Good. Okay. I'll send you the address. Okay, I'll see you there. Bye. Yeah. Split the check. Okay. Mom, my marriage is over. Oh, Author of You Can Have It All Doesn't Have It All. Getting a divorce. Newly ex-wife Chloe's publishing her own tell-all book. Career's over. Everybody's gonna think I'm a big joke. Oh, <laughs> oh come on, son. Do people buy tell-all books. <laughs> don't be a snowflake. Winners don't cry. What? What? Since when did Drew get 20,000 followers on his Instagram page? <laughs> oh, it's okay. Shh, 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 shh. And he wrote one book. Like, 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 I, you can be a one hit wonder on like music, but he was a one book wonder. He had one good, he had one good book, and it was a fucking a, a success novel. And then that's it. I feel like you have to have be, already be prominent in like the the social media world and success world and like have like name recognition if you're gonna write a success novel like you don't just write a success novel when you're not already known twin keeg and y1 for the sub shoji for the three that was a good video though all right next one i told 100 kids santa isn't real isn't real i'm gonna tell kids santa isn't real no parent wants to be the one to tell their kid that Santa Claus isn't real. So I'm gonna start a business where I do it for them. Here's my plan. I'm gonna set up a booth for free photos with Santa and while the kid is taking their picture, I'll go up to the parent and tell them- And just they're... scream in their face, Santa isn't real! Fuck it, like what the hell are you gonna do? $20, I can tell their kids Santa isn't real so that they don't have to be the one to do it. But I can't do this alone, so I asked my brother and friends to help. <laughs> That's so bad. I don't think anybody would ever try to take up that offer. Do you think that we would make... You set, you set the kid to the side. As I was saying earlier. Have you ever thought why why Santa gives proportionately cheaper, <laughs> cheaper presents to lower income families? And the kid goes, hmm. And he starts, he starts like, he starts like going like this. He's like, hmm, that's us. Well, well, Santa Claus, maybe Santa Claus just likes the richer kids more. And you go, okay. <laughs> then, you, then you hit him with the, uh, well, how would, he, how would he deliver all those presents in that amount of time? And he goes, hmm. Well, Santa Claus has superpowers, so, you know, that's probably how. And you're like, Okay, well, why is why why are all the Santa Clauses uh, at all the malls at once? And he goes, mm, well, that's obvious. That's all the elves. That's all the elves that are just filling his place. Obviously, the only real Santa Claus is the Macy's Day Parade Santa Claus. Make enough money to get Jeremy's flight back home for the party. I think so. So yeah, we're having a Christmas party in five days, and we told our friend Jeremy we'd buy him a flight to Austin so he can make it. Okay. So, thought this would be the fastest way for us to make some quick cash. Are y'all in? I think if it gets Jeremy back, yeah. So step number one is finding a Santa Claus, and I think I know where we can find one. Here comes Santa Claus, here comes Santa Claus, right down Santa Claus Lane. Blixin' and blixin' and all his reindeers pulling on the rain. Hi, how's it going? We have Ooh, that Santa's in shambles. That's one of the new mall Santas. Ooh. On the rain. Hi, how's it going? We have an exciting business opportunity that we want to propose. We're providing a service for parents where we're telling kids that Santa isn't real, and we wanted to see if you wanted to be part of that. Telling kids that Santa isn't real? Yeah. yeah it's... That's so crazy. Kids have an imagination of mm -hmm. Santa. They think a lot of him. I can just give you my card, and we could talk about it at some later point. I have a card here. If that's... No, it's a, yeah, we can we can take. Yeah. Well, this guy's not in. But his job is also based off the fact that people believe in it, right? Like he, 
he he is literally making like he's working right now. But obviously he's filling the spot because Santa Claus Santa Claus has to work. He's not going to be able to take the pictures with all the kids. So he's the one that's that's just filling this place right now. Interested, but I got back and I put an ad on Craigslist and I got a response the next day from someone named Carlton Cottle. Dre and I hopped on a call to see if he's the right Santa for the job. Hey! Hello! Hey! So what we're doing is uh, we are starting a business where we are going to tell kids that Santa Claus isn't real. Mm hmm The one question is, say we get a parent that says yes. Chat, uh, when did you guys stop believing in Santa? I mean, like, I, I still believe in Santa right now, but I know there's a lot of haters, right? There's a lot of, there's a lot of Santa doubters around. So, you know, I'm just, wow, you guys really stopped believing in Santa Claus? 9, 10, 11, 12, 8. Six, never. See, yeah, I appreciate the nevers. I appreciate the nevers. To telling their kid that Santa isn't real. Would you be willing to do that? To tell... said 23. What the fuck? The kid that... Oh, yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think, uh, I think the last thing we do need... Can we get a uh, ho, 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 Merry Christmas from you as uh, Santa? Ho, ho, ho! Merry Christmas! And to all... A good night. Wow. Well, I mean, that must be Santa Claus. Honestly, I've never heard a better ho 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 in my life. Oh, hey, that was good. Right? That was good. Yeah. Man, that's impressive. Fantastic. All right, let we'll me talk to you later. You. All right, sounds Appreciate good. Appreciate it. Let's go, dude. We got Dance us a Santa, Santa Claus. Claus. <laughs> <laughs> the next day came, and the boys are over to meet Carlton. They're they're nervous. Should I show him this? Love I don't want to my hands. Just act natural. Just act natural. Okay. He's an actor, but it's not that big of a deal, okay? He's a, he's a person like us. <laughs> Me neither. I think I hear him coming up. Here he is. I'm nervous. <laughs> Come on in. How's it going? Yeah. Nice yeah. to meet you. So, Carlton, uh, I need to come clean. I haven't been completely honest. Uh, I explained to Carlton that the real reason we're doing this is because we're trying to buy a plane ticket for our friend Jeremy so we can come to our Christmas party, which is only two days away now. Boys. We are gonna get Jeremy here for this party. Hell yeah. Let's go! Let's go, Let's go baby! Let's go. Yes! Let's go! Okay, calm down. It's not a business. This is a business. This yes, is a business. this is a serious okay. thing. Don't get that excited. I think we should rehearse what we're gonna do tomorrow. Someone's gonna play a parent. Someone's gonna play the kid. Someone's gonna play the elf that's with Santa. I guess who, who would be the kid here? I'm not really sure. Uh, off the top of my head, I'm just gonna say Ethan. I think. <laughs> <laughs> so you will be wearing a diaper. Right? No. <laughs> Take it, Jeremy. Yes. Take the shit. Take yes. It. I'll do it for Jeremy. <laughs> you guys ever like pee on the mall, Santa? <clears throat> oh my God. Um, no, I never did, but I had friends that did. <sighs> like you piss yourself. You piss yourself while you're while you're sitting with the mall, Santa. Every time. Yeah, you get a little nervous. God, dude, I remember the last few mall Santas that I that I sat with. They smelled like cigarettes. I remember that. You sit next to them, their breath stinks. They kind of smell like Marlboros. You're like, look, look. I didn't know Santa has a nicotine addiction. I did not know. I didn't know Santa supports Marlboros. <laughs> Go ahead, Ethan. Come out. Come out. <laughs> I don't see my mom. <laughs> Drayton, you're going to play the parent. Jack, you're going to be the one pitching this uh, opportunity to the parent. I'm going to need you to step up, all right? And show me that you've got what it takes to lead. Can you tell me that there's a shot to be CEO of this company one day? Yes. I'm going to give it my all. Show me what you got. This is getting really intimate. <laughs> and they blurring in the back. <laughs> and action. Oh, howdy, y'all. Uh, Santa's coming to town, and he is offering free pictures today. No, wait. <laughs> he's coming to town. Looks like he's already here. He's coming back to oh, town. Go ahead, Lunch. What's your name? Lunch? <laughs> no, lunch? Jack. Let's see what you got. What's your name? Lunch the second. That's Lunch the third. Lunch Junior. 
Yeah. So what I was thinking is, instead of you telling your child, your young little baby boy, if you don't want to tell him about Santa not being real, why, how about us? How about we do it instead? How about we do that? You? Strangers? I don't think No, 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 no. But Damn it, Jack. Let's run it back again. I'm really sorry. Hey, do better. Action. You want a free picture with Santa today? Yeah, go for it. What's your name? Paul. Paul? Paul or Paul? His name's Paul, okay? Just call him by Paul. his name. Paul. Paul. Paul, I noticed your son over here. Grunion. Don't laugh. Don't. Were you guys upset when you when it was like, if oh God, how do I talk about this? Am I like I, I feel like I shouldn't even have to like be like uh, you know, um, miscellaneous. I don't know if I'm using the right terminology. Just don't talk about this, dude. We're watching a video about this. I feel like I feel like anybody that is watching my channel right now should not currently you know right Am I wrong? Like I like hey if you're if you're in my chat right now like I don't think that you should don't do this. Okay. Okay. Don't laugh. Sorry. That's his name. Yeah. Say his name, Jack. What's that? Say his name. Oh, yeah. Grunion. Grunion and Paul. What does Grunion remind you of the name itself? Not my son. It reminds me of Grunion, I'm not gonna lie. That's what all people say at school when they're bullying him. Well, you Damn it, Jack. You just ruined it for thousands of people. Bro, no the fuck I didn't. I, don't think that I didn't ruin shit. Little Grunion puts probably a lot of trust in you, huh? Yeah, actually, he does. I don't want him to lose that faith and that trust in you. So, Paul, for the low, low price of $19.99, you can have us take the burden. You're a non-believer? No, I believe in Santa. Of telling your son that Santa is not real. So he doesn't lose that trust in you, and he blames us. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. So that's the signal. Yeah, that's the signal. Okay. I know that you're a big boy and you can take the truth now. Okay. Okay, Brungan. Hey, you've been told your whole life that Santa's real, right? Yeah. Well, I'm here to tell you the truth. You deserve the truth. You want always tell, you always tell the truth, right? Truth will set you free, yeah. right? Truth, right? Mm-hmm. Well, Santa's not real. What? Wait, Paul, he hey, said that, that he was real. Hold, hold that thought. Hold that thought. One second, okay? When this <laughs> newfound truth, head off wow. into the wild blue yonder of life, knowing that you are piloting a brand new aircraft, one that's based on truth. That's what you gotta think about. Nothing to cry about. You're on the truth train now. Choo choo! Get out there, engineer. All Go. Right. Go get him, Brian. Yeah. Wow. yeah! That was perfect. Wow. How's everybody feeling? I'm feeling good. great. Good. I'm great. Yeah. yeah, everybody's feeling good? I think it's safe to say we're ready for tomorrow. Hey, hey, Jeremy on three. One, One two, two, three. three. Jeremy! Jeremy! All right, the big night is finally here. We're setting up at the Trail of Lights here in Austin. There's expected to be over 20,000 people here, which means there's plenty of kids to tell that Santa Claus isn't real. And good thing too, because the party is tomorrow and Jeremy's ready to go. He's just waiting on us to buy his flight. Bro, I highly doubt this actually goes through. Give the boys their elf costumes. Ethan's going to be a Christmas tree, but his face screen is fogging up. So he's just going to put it on after this 25 minute walk over to where we're setting up. I guess Carlton got here early. Just kind of walking around as Santa Claus saying, hey to people we need to go find them and we need to start making some cash quick i want you to how much do you think they have to charge i feel like 10 bucks all these guys and you've got position of ceo it's a deal we started making the journey over to our spot but then we spotted carlton just walking back i'd do it for free i'd do it for free i i i think it would be like a public service that i <laughs> that would be like it'd be like i just want to see the reactions Cause I like, why would you, why would you ever believe some random fucking guy in an elf costume? Right? Like if you're like 10 years old and some guy walks up to you and he's like, Santa's not real. You're like, fuck you. Right? I'd be like, what the fuck you mean? In the other direction. Carlton, there he is. My truck alarm is going off. I got to go back and check on my truck real quick. Oh God. Oh yeah. no. So scout out the area. Yeah, you, we will. You can see everything. I'll meet you back over there. Okay. Perfect. You yes. look great. You look hey, great fantastic. right now. Thanks. Oh yeah, we're right there. Let me go check my yeah, truck. Yeah, go check on your Sounds good. We'll see you in a minute. We made the rest of the walk and found the perfect spot next to the exit. Uh, now we're just waiting on Carlton to get back. Uh, I just called Carlton and he did not pick up. So. Wait, was that for real? 
his yeah, car exactly. got robbed. There's no way he would dip like that, bro. We were starting to get concerned, but then I got a text from him. He just said, give me one minute. I have a flat tire. This is a new truck. Yeah, he just said that he has a flat tire and that he's trying to make sure that it's okay. He said someone just went up and let the air out on his truck, on the tire. We spent like 20 minutes waiting for Carlton and I still hadn't heard anything. So I uh, decided to give him a call. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. He just dips on them. We spent another 30 minutes just waiting around for Carlton, and I hadn't heard anything, so I decided to give him one last shot. Your call has been forwarded to an automatic voice message system. No way. What do we do? Did he dip on them? Should I just go back and get the Santa costume? Maybe. On I mean, should we do that? We'll have one last person to film that. Also fucking dub, Hunter Williams, good channel. Yeah. If we don't have a Santa, we can't do this. Like, we need a Santa. I'll do it for Jeremy. Ethan's making the long journey back to the car to get the extra Santa costume, and we started setting everything up. There he is. They're in the hallway. Let's go, dude. And he's gonna be the one. Do you want a free photo with Santa? Free pictures with Santa. No! No! Merry Christmas! They're gonna wait until they until it's like an older kid. And then they're gonna walk up to the parent and be like, okay. Have you been good this year? No. <laughs> here comes Santa Claus. Here comes Santa Claus. Right. <laughs> like bro. <laughs> that motherfucker's. That motherfucker's seventeen. Get the fuck off Santa's lap. What the fuck? Fart? No, 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 I laughed. <laughs> so Jack's been asking parents this entire time, but unfortunately I couldn't film all of it since we were a man short. I just did it three times. One was a laugh. One was the angriest person on earth. The last one was just like, not at all, dude. <laughs> Guys, it's great that we're, you know, getting photos and whatnot, people are having fun, but we need to start making some money or this is all for nothing. If we don't start making money, Jeremy's not gonna make it to this party. We need to start stepping it up. Solid point. We need to get those sales. Where does fucking Santa go? For right. Jeremy, Jeff. For Jeremy. For Jeremy. So for an extra $20, we'll tell the kids that Santa's not For you. We'll do it for you. She laughed at me. You gotta be better, Jeff, okay? Oh, God, this one's gonna be bad. This one's gonna be bad, dude. You got this, Jeff. Whoa! So, hey. Hey. So, hey, um... Uh, I have an offer for you. Well, <laughs> do you want us to ruin your kid's day? Yes or no? So for an extra $20, we can tell them that Santa isn't real. You know what I mean? I, tried, I can't do this. <laughs> you gotta do it. I just tried. I can't. You gotta do it again. I just did it, and hey. I got the meanest face I've ever got in my entire life. Come on, Jack. You gotta get one. This is probably the last year they take a picture. The last year they're gonna take a picture with Santa? That means these kids are perfect for this opportunity. Let's uh, let's hope Jack can make the sale. So hey, for an extra twenty dollars, we'll tell your kids for you that Santa is real. And if they get forget. Oh uh, yeah, of course. Alrighty, big smile, big smile. Well, that they is forgive me. Like what? Very unfortunate. Uh, but Dre's Turkey Kern, thank you for the five gifteds. 5k, uh, 5k for the sub, Avery for the sub, uh, Icy Drip for the three, it's LC, oh, LC Drip, uh, Fart for the three, Stormy for the sub, Jimmy for the three, wanted to ask if you listen to Pink Floyd, not often, uh, but I have, Kali, uh, Melody, Kato, Carbon, Truey for the sub, Keeg, Y1 for the sub, Shoji for the three, all right, Joshi for the thousand bettys, thank you for the fucking thousand bets, bro. He's up next, and he was able to get one pretty fast. Tell him, you can tell him. Tell him, you can tell him. Santa's not oh my god no no uh but dre's up next and he was able to get one pretty fast tell him you can tell him tell him you can tell him santa's not real son <laughs> <laughs> yeah but just oh, as we already were... knows
starting to build a little bit of momentum, the unthinkable happened. The kind of the cops are here, dude. Oh, we're doing free photos so, of Santa. It's kind of weird that we have Santa in there, and then you're bringing Santa here, right? Do you guys think about that? Two Santas? Yeah. It's kind of weird. Yeah. Do yeah. But we don't do two Santas. You guys gotta go. We gotta go. We gotta go. Operation failed. This is... Two Santas, kind of weird, right? Oh, wow. It's two Santas, right? Kind of fucking weird, right? It's gonna pull some questions from kids. Oh, is it going to pull up some fucking questions from kids when there's like a fucking mall Santa at every fucking mall in the United States? Isn't that a little fucking weird? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I'm going to sit on the sidewalk and fucking take pictures as Santa Claus if I fucking want to, buddy. It's genuinely devastating. It feels like everything that could have gone wrong went wrong. Also, they obviously look like fake Santas. This is like obviously like a group of like 26 year olds. Like nothing went right. We'll figure something out. No, we won't. The party's tomorrow. It's 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 over. He's not coming. As we were making our way back to the car, I got a text from Carlton. It's a public space. It is. It is. Dude, I remember I saw on social media the other day, dude, people holding up cardboard signs that said Santa isn't real next to like a big event where there was like Christmas shit and they were they were like holding up like cardboard signs that were like Santa's not fucking real and I was like damn he's been dealing with insurance that's uh, crazy then we hopped on a call with Jeremy to break the news we ended up not making any money so um we're not gonna be able to buy the plane ticket damn uh I gotta go so I'll talk to you guys later <laughs> They were not doing it for Jerry! They were even doing it for Jerry! Damn it! Is he singing? Christmas is awful. Is this one the door? Stop. Yeah, 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 yeah. Someone's not. Here, I'll check. Let me see. Hey! Jeremy? Dude, how did you get here? There's a plane ticket under my Christmas tree this morning. Oh my god. Oh my god. Carlton. He's the real Santa. Oh my god. In the quiet evening snow. <laughs> Of course. Nah, I just got my own plane ticket. Oh, that, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. Actually, that makes a lot of sense. Much, I... uh, much more logical. Dude, come in, man. Hey, come hey, in. Hey, hey, hey. I'm here to save it. I'm seeing stuff. An iPhone? What the fuck? Who the fuck's dropping that bread on a fucking present? Holy shit. <laughs> yo, I've always, I've always wanted, yo, chat, I don't know if you guys know this, but you know how people wrap presents as things that are, that they aren't? I want to do that so bad when I'm a dad. Like, when I get my kid a present, I, like, I want it to be like a gift card, but I'm going to wrap it like it's a bike or something like that. <laughs> Like, I don't know how, I don't know how they do that. Like, I see the videos of people, like, rapping shit as, like, Stewie Griffin or something like that. And it's, like, just, like, a little card. How do they do that, though? Like, what are they getting structurally that's going to fucking make it like that? That, or just get, like, a big box. I feel like that's the easier, that's the more common thing is you get, like, a gift card and you put it in a box, in a box, in a box, in a box. And then it's, like, a fucking TV, like, an empty TV box. And then they like keep opening it down and down. Side, Gingerbread houses taste like fucking shit. Gingerbread houses are the most disgusting fucking food in the world. That was a fucking good ass video though. I gotta sub to that guy. Hold up. What was his fucking name again? Hunter Williams. I Good ass video. All right, next. Why your hometown sucks. 
hometowns, the place we all wish we didn't come from. Let's hometowns, the place we all wish we didn't come from. Let's face it, your hometown is inherently embarrassing. Either your hometown is full of poor yokels that you don't associate with politically or intellectually, or your hometown is full of rich assholes who you don't associate with intellectually or politically. Also, it would ruin that liberal self-made image you have to your friends in Brooklyn if they found out that your dad is a CFO of Tyson Foods. But you know, we're all living a lie, so don't even worry about it. Well, the holidays are coming up, and that brings with it the mass migration of 20-something year olds who moved to the big city for a sense of purpose, and also to create a wide geographical gap between themselves and their Uncle Ricky who has a little bit too much to say about the Rothschild. But there's something about going back to your hometown that is equal parts comforting <laughs> as it Rothschild is- Rothschild conspiracy? You know, you know they, you know they run the banks, right? You know the Roth, you ever see the TikToks where it's, where California Dreamin's playing in the back and it's like, all the leaves are brown and the sky, and it's like him like this, fucking sitting there. You know, you know the Rothschilds actually run the world. They actually run the banks. You think you think that we have a government? We don't. The Rothschilds run everything. It is depressing. A feeling so indescribable that someone would have to spend the next eight to eleven. Did you ever leave New Jersey? Uh yeah. Ah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Minutes just breaking down the complexities of such an emotion. I'm also gonna talk shit for the majority of this video. I feel like people don't like your, I, I would say the broad reason people don't like their hometown is because it's not really an entertaining place. Hometowns are usually places that are just good to raise children, you know, unless your hometown's like New York City, but like the majority of people's hometowns aren't city life. It's usually like the majority of people's hometowns are like rural, like areas where it's like fucking the coolest thing that you could do is go to a Walmart and then you move from there. To begin, I want to start with the heart of any dog shit small town, which is, of course, the people. Whether it be that old lady who's been behind the counter at your local packy for as long as you can remember, or that small town cop that has busted generations of men in your family for underage drinking, every town has the people that adds a little spice to the local culture. So here are the people in your hometowns that you will have to deal with when you go home for the holiday. Number one, we have Todd. Oh my God, dude, Jesus Christ, what are you doing? Todd is the fella in your hometown who peaked in high school and he's gonna make that your issue. God forbid you go to the local- Oh my. God, you go to the local bar? Bro, you remember that game? Fuck. You ever see that one kid? Like, when I saw that kid uh, that I went to in high school, or went to high school with uh, when I was on my break, like, he was chill. We just had a conversation. And, like, I'm a senior in high... Or not in, a senior in high school. I'm a senior in college now. So, like, people bringing up high school is, like, getting weird, you know? Like, now bringing up high school, unless it's, like, a fucking reunion, it's, like, why are you bringing that up? And so, like, I've seen kids that, like, I went, I graduated high school with, and I'm, like, I'm, I'm 21 right now. I graduated high school, yeah, it was fucking three and a half years ago, but it's, like, it's still, like, that. Eh, like, who, who, there's way more entertaining things than high school. When you're in college, there's more things that you do, you're more of a person, all this other shit. Anyways, I'm talking to, I'm talking to this guy, or you just talk to somebody in general, and if they're bringing up, like, oh, you remember that fucking game? Oh, you remember that last senior game, dude? Oh, God. Their, their pride and joy days were fucking junior year in high school. And that's, like, rough. Like, that's, I, that, that's, that's the worst. Uh, I would still say it's not that bad. Like, if you're in, like, I'm 21. I'm in college. If you're bringing up, if you're bringing up high school now, like, memories from that, that's not that crazy. But if you're, like, 30 years old and you're bringing up, like, sporting events that you had in high school, that's, like, you peaked in high school. Jesus Christ. Get a life. A watering hole and leave an empty bar stool next to you. Because that means there's a large... That's his last memory with you? Yeah, that's why, that's why I'm saying that's not necessarily weird. People that I haven't seen, if they bring up high school, that's not crazy, right? But, like, guys I know or people I've known, like, out of high school and they bring up high school, that's when it's like, ugh. Like, your family members. Like, you probably have one uncle that, like, brings up, like, high school memories, and he's, like, 46. What's going off in Todd's living room, letting him know that there's an ear to talk off within a five-mile radius. Anytime you tell a story about your life or something that's happened recently, he somehow finds a way to relate that back to high school, which is such a yeah. bummer. And if you don't know, almost every high school story is a you-had-to-be-there story. So he speaks exclusively in that language. And he still drinks like a fish, like it's cool, but it's really not cool anymore once you can't hold a job down due to your alcoholism. And he goes to every high school football game, even though he definitely doesn't- That's nuts. That's nuts. Bro, I remember when I was in high school, there were alumni 
that didn't have kid. If you're if you're an alumni of your high school and you have a kid that's going to that high school and you go to the game, whatever, right? But I remember I was in high school and I'd look over to the stands and there would be alumni that were like 10 years out of high school that were watching the fucking football game. Like, buddy, buddy, you don't know anyone here. Why are, like, you're supporting, you're supporting a team you're not a fucking part of. Like, what the fuck? kid on the roster you know matthew mcconaughey in dazed and confused well he's matthew mcconaughey in dazed and confused except for the fact that he doesn't look like matthew mcconaughey he looks like this and he smells like the container the rotisserie chicken came in number two we got bobby oh boy do we have bobby bobby is the person in your hometown that you never want to hang out with yet somehow every time you go home you end up hanging out with him he's your friend from high school what's that alumni somebody that's graduated like when i graduate college i will be an alumni of my university right you're somebody that went there and finished there. You're an alumni if you went to that school and finished at that school. Never left the homeland, and he's been working the same job since 2014. And there's nothing wrong with that. A lot of people take that A postgraduate, yeah, of that, still mentally of that college stuck or, or high in 2014. He still casually uses slurs in conversation, and he says things like, oh, here comes Mr. College. Like, as if that's a negative. He'll constantly refer to the fact that you've changed a lot since high school as if that's not an extremely normal thing. If you want to get a strong feeling for Bobby, go listen Yeah, to you're not the exact same person you were when you were 18. Well, yeah, it's been three years. It's only been three years. Uh, yeah, but it's kind of when you fucking change, bud. New perspective by Noah No Khan. shit. And just, you know, get feel the sadness that comes with a character like this. Next up, we have Eric. Fuck, dude. Remember Eric? God, that kid was so cool. Eric is the guy when you go home you do want to hang out with. But somehow, you know, he's just always busy, which is fine. I mean, he only comes home every so often. So I, I get he wants to spend time with the family. But, you know, if you could find some time in between visits, it would be nice to see you. You'd probably consider Eric to be one of your best friends. I mean, for, honestly, he'd probably be in your wedding party if he ever got married. And despite the fact that, you, you know, you haven't seen him in a long, good amount of time. But that's Eric, dude. I mean, goddamn, he's always on a bigger and better things. Remember that time in high school when Eric took Mr. I feel like that's not that crazy with dudes, though. Like, there's guys that I'll see once every fucking two years that I would say I'm still friends with. And I don't speak to them. But it's like I'll see them in public, and we're not even hanging out. And I'll be like, yo. And you're still, like, chill with them. Uh, Laporte shoes, and then, oh my god, am I Bobby? And then we have Michelle, who's fine. I don't have a problem with Michelle. She's fine. Michelle is just that one motherfucker who has done everything right. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's I don't know what happened. You were on pretty equal footing back in high school with Michelle. You you both did the same shit pretty good. Both got good grades. Both had a you know decent social life. Both went to good colleges. But then somehow after college, when the dust settled, suddenly she has an amazing job and a husband. What the? And she's starting to have a kid in a house. What are you? Bro, yeah. When like I'm I'm getting at that. I mean I'm I'm still young, right? But like there are people that are 20 and 21 that get married. And I have a few friends from high school that are married. And I just think that's crazy. Because, like, I'm still in fucking college. Like, I could not imagine getting married at 21. But there's people that do. And what's even crazier is, dude, a lot of your grandparents probably were married and had kids at, like, 19. Which I just think is insane. Like, I could not raise a child when I was 19. I could not be married when I was 19. Like, that's, fuck. I feel like that's still fucking so young. Like, 21, yeah. I mean, like, I, if I had to, if you just threw down, like, hey, you gotta, you gotta raise this, co this kid, I'd be like, okay, I'd be capable. I wouldn't be the best dad, but I'd know what I'm doing. But, like, fucking, people are having kids when they're 18, 19, or even in high school, I'm like, dude, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. Seven, you're a kid. We're both still children. What are you doing? Slow down. We shouldn't have our lives together like that, Michelle, at this point, right? Are, are... I had a son at 18, lol. It's hard. That's what I'm saying. Like, I'm not dissing people that do. Like, it's your life, you know, do what you want. I'm just saying, personally, I feel like I would not be able to take that challenge. Am I fucking up? Because you're I thought you were a middle aged man. Dude, I'm Gen Z. Like, I, I'm still, this is, I, I'm still in the first year I'm legally allowed to drink. Me up. And last but not least, we have Sarah. Fuck Sarah. Fuck her. Sarah is the girl who was the hottest in her high school class, and she never left her hometown because she did not want to leave that feeling. I wouldn't either, but, you know, you, you gotta move on at one point. She probably works in, you know, nursing or mental health, even though she bullied people to the brink of suicide in high school. And even though you are ten times Yo, worse- Yo, that's the funniest shit. When you meet the dickhead in high school, and they're like, what do you want to be when you grow up? A doctor. I want to help people.
person you were in high school when you talk to her, she still finds a way to make you feel like a dumb little nerd who doesn't have any social skills. It's like a superpower. It's like a CIA trick. The clock's running out. You know, people are starting to pay less attention to her and she's getting nervous because, she, you know, she hasn't really settled down yet. And that's fun to watch for me. I mean, the stories of her setting her ex-boyfriend's mailbox on fire are starting to boil up. And you know, that's, this isn't a real person. I just wanna, I wanna make that, <laughs> I wanna make that clear. Now that we've covered all the local wildlife, let's start talking about where they dwell. Every point of origin has these weird random places that hold a lot of significance to the town people. It doesn't usually have rhyme or reason to it, but it does usually come from teens who need a place to hang out and they pass that place down to other teens and then it's just generations of degenerates. So let's talk about the specific places in your hometown that everyone likes to hang out at and it's kind of sad a little bit. Number one, let's go with the spot in the woods where you blacked out a couple times. It's usually a ha <laughs> <laughs> Just in the middle of the fucking woods. Random area about a half mile past the tree line with some like logs you can sit on. Or it could be a secluded field or even a random sand pit that was created for a housing project that was abandoned due to the two. My hometown's nothing like this. I mean, that's why he's listing multiple things. 2008 recession. That was my. What the hell was your laugh? Shut the fuck up. That was my place to hang out in. This place is in the sweet spot where you're not going to get caught underage drinking, but you're close enough to adults where you can get help if you actually need it. It also always has some vague element of danger nearby. Not intentionally, but for some reason, drunk teens are drawn to large bodies of water like a quickly moving river or a giant lake and someone at one point will die there due to those factors but you weren't hanging out that night so the cost won't come to your door so you're golden number two and this one will definitely you know weed out what kind of social class you're in but i'm going to talk about the big store who doesn't love the nah it's not target it's always a walmart i feel like that's the hangout or the grocery store the local grocery store big store whether it's target walmart market basket even like a big enough walgreens it's just got to be a big store and it's fucking sick to hang People out People actually at. get charged for underage drinking in america very rarely just an epicenter of community where you can mill about and no one's gonna really bother you when you're younger just walk around talking Dude, i remember that was like the fun thing to do when i was like uh when i was like a sophomore and my friend that was like older than me had a license and he'd be like bro let's go to fucking let's go to walmart and then we just stroll the aisles and like you get you get to the you get to that one aisle that has that rack full of like bouncy balls and you just start fucking chucking them over aisles and shit your homies looking at shit to buy you can get some snacks for the sleepover later it's just a good time and at one point you'll probably end up working at big store big store is giver big store supplies the economy big store keeps us safe don't worry about small store closing because big store has better prices big store keeps us safe Big store is is a provider. Don't resist big store. Number three, we have your friend's basement. Oh my God, so much shit happened in this basement. Holy hell. This was the basement of your friend that now that you think about it, had pretty absentee parents, but it worked out in your favor. Not great for the kid themselves, but it was a great place for you and your graduating class to learn about the human body, both yourselves and others. The basement is still horribly stained and smells funny from all the spilled beer and bodily fluids that were sprayed all over. Stains all over the fucking carpet. The wall. But my God. The nights of your life were in that basement, and you respect the shit out of it. And honestly, let's all pause and reflect on what we gained from the neglectful parents of that basement. I hate- I would never want to have a basement like this. Where it's just cluttered and everything's just fucking thrown all over the place. That would stress me out. And last but not least, we have the derelict mall. Truly the visual representation of, uh, societal rock. Hey gang, it's- Yo, Nolan, thank you for the five gifted subs. Fucking thank Nolan if you got a sub. Thank you for the five gifteds, bro. My God. No one's been popping out with the subs. 39 subs of the channel. What the fuck? Gavin for the three. Merry Christmas for Gavin and Emma. We love you, Joe. Thank you. Muni for the three. Gun in his mouth. He begging. Please, I told my man, grab the pliers. Make a necklace out his teeth. MX for the five. I want to express my deepest gratitude for your streams. Your positive energy uh, and insightful content have been a source of comfort for me during challenging times. Your streams and YouTube videos have truly made a positive impact on my life. Thank you very much. Thank you for the fucking 500 biddies and the nice message. Isabella Rose for the, th uh, for the 10. Watching on my Alexa making carrot cake. How are you watching me on your Alexa? Watching you on my Alexa making carrot cake. Merry Christmas, Joe. Thanks for uh, entertaining me. Merry Christmas to you too. Jack for the Jack for the 35. I'm a cologne collector and perfumer. What's your favorite cologne and why? Just curious, W Stream. A cologne that I wear a lot is Inter Eternity by uh, Calvin Klein. Uh, and I remember my grandpa used to tell me that they uh, sprayed on dead Italian men uh, because it's named Eternity. And so it will, like, 
last forever or some shit. It's like an Italian cologne. Uh, stereotypical type shit. It's good. I like it. I don't know if it's my favorite, but it's the one I wear a lot. Joshy for the thousand, but he's turkey for the fucking five gifted. Thank you for the 35 Jack got up. What the fuck? Me, Big Tug. Um, so a little aside I have to make. For the rest of this video, uh, I noticed in the, the editing booth that my Somebody fl redeemed flex. fly is suddenly down. You'll notice it uh, in the next scene, and it doesn't get fixed for the rest of the video. Uh, I just, I don't know how this happened. I didn't go pee. I didn't, do, I didn't do anything. I watched the footage, and I didn't do anything. I don't know how my fucking fly's down. So enjoy that, I guess. Personally, my local mall is now a hospital, which is ironic, because that's the first place I got jumped. I keep getting jumped. I don't know what that's all about. In its heyday, your parents used to drop you off. You had 40 bucks in your pocket. Why would he mention it? Because now I'm going to stare at it. Like, I mean, like, why, like, I wouldn't have known. And you just run amok. You'd spend most of your time eating in the food court or squinting your way through a dark Abercrombie and Fitch or maybe even, you know, perusing the dildos at Spencer's Gifts. Why were those in there? And now it's just a boarded up memory of what once was with some stores clinging to life and an auntie and- I, I used to buy a lot of those cool graphic tees from like the- I, I think I had the Gengar shirt. Was in there. And now it's just a boarded up memory of what once was with some stores clinging to life and an Auntie Anne's that is really holding it together. They're really doing well still. I don't know how that's possible. We missed them all for what it was and what it did for us. But God forbid at this point in my life, I have to leave my house to buy a pair of jeans. I'm shopping online. I don't give a shit. Godspeed. I never try shit on. I'll shop online or I'll just go to the store and buy it. And I've gone shopping with Brooke before and she'll like pick clothes out for me. And she's like, you don't want to try them on? I'm like, no. I hate trying shit on. It's the worst thing in the fucking world. Like going in, going into like an American Eagle and in, in the back room and trying everything on. Oh, fuck that shit. Uh, that and then like uh, she'll be like, well, what if it doesn't fit? I'll be like, I'll return it or I'll wear a belt. I'll wear a belt. Then they'll be oversized. Uh, Quas for the three. Uh, I'm sorry. Please unband me. I please. I hi. And I thought I'd be gunny. They called me a sissy liberal. Nah, that's not that bad. Now that I have thoroughly shit talked uh, hometown, you got soul fans, brother. You got soul fans. I want to talk about the things that hometowns provide for us, because there's still some good things about them. You. I mean, it's not all roses and daisies. You're not going to find a sweet green or a local roastery, but there's still some things about hometowns that are, you know, slightly beneficial. So here are technically the good things about visiting your hometown. Number one, you don't have to get dressed up. You don't have to put on airs for anybody. You're in Spencer, Mass Pajamas all the way, uh, all, all over the place. You know, you don't even got to worry about your fit. Massachusetts. They have a Dairy Queen, but that's pretty much it. If you live in a big city and you go to the local store and the pajama pants... I thought you were streaming at 2. I'm streaming at 2 uh, the rest of the week. But today I had a stream at noon because it's Christmas Eve. Tomorrow I'm not live. The baby for the sub. In a hoodie, people are either going to assume you're homeless or depressed. Or both. But in a small town, who gives a fuck, dude? Wear whatever you want. Honestly, it's the opposite problem. If I wore something snazzy to my local Cumberland Farms, people would yell slurs at me. They'd ask me if I was going I think to the you ever, If you ever go to a Walmart past 9 p.m., I think everyone's in pajamas. And I'm never in pajamas, but if I ever go to a Walmart late at night, everyone is wearing, like, those, like, Grinch pajamas. But it's, like, August. But, like, there's that one woman that's wearing the Grinch pajamas or a guy in, like, fucking sweatpants with stains on him. Why are chicken wings better reheated? They aren't. Very convention. That Pizza's better reheated. Pizza the next day in the microwave. Oh, lasagna. Same thing. I feel like it's things with cheese. Things with cheese are better reheated. That's just local culture. Number two, everything is so cheap that it seems like a scam. It seems like someone's stealing from me. I mean, compared to the cities I've lived in, Chicago, New York, I, I, a, pa a pack of cigarettes, if it's under $20, I gasp. I don't even smoke cigarettes. I just like comparing the prices. I mean, Ubers are so much cheaper. You could drive from Worcester to Boston in an Uber. It'd be like 40 bucks. That's probably not true. But it's a lot cheaper than New York City. Number three, you can wave to people from your car and they will wave back and not assume you're a crazy person. That's dope as shit. In the city, if you wave at a stranger, they'll assume you have a knife and mace you. And I don't blame them. Don't trust anyone in the city they're all evil but if you see someone in the suburbs and you wave at them they'll wave back that's fucking crazy dude i appreciate the shit out of that number four the holiday house decorations go hard 
And that's obviously a uh, thing I'm thinking about because it's seasonal when I film this video. You Dude, can I think it. about the fact that whenever I have like a, a small interaction with a person that I don't know, I'll never see them again. Never see them again. Like that old guy I was talking to you guys about when I got back from my break that was an Eagles fan and he paid for my drinks. I'll never see that man in my life. Ever again. Like I like like we were we are living on the same planet. We met each other. We know each other. We have memories of each other. And I'm never going to see them uh, ever again. Like there's this one guy that I that I keep thinking. Okay, not like y'all are gonna say hey, yeah. One guy that I keep thinking about that I met in the airport like six months ago. Me and him had like a very small interaction, but he was a chill dude. And I could like perceive myself being friends with him if I knew him. But like we literally met each other, and then it was like I'm never gonna see that fucking guy again. Like ever this in august i don't know but right now i'm thinking about the christmas lights and they are dope in suburbs i mean yeah big cities put on a little show but like it's not gonna touch mrs mayweather's fucking celebration of life with those lights like i wonder what he's doing right now do you ever wonder that not like a famous person but i'm saying like somebody you met like what is that guy doing right now someone someone you met a year ago three years ago and you know like dude they could be dead like that's what i always think about too like they could be dead right now the, the things people do in small towns with their lights, they, they set them to and the And you'll never know. Like, you'll never know. I don't even know their name. Radio, and it, it does the music. I fucking love looking at Christmas lights. And number five, and what I think is the best thing about small towns, is it's your people. It's the people, it's the people. And I know I was just absolutely shit-talking people in small towns like five minutes ago, but just hear me out. Yes, there's always gonna be issues in your small town. That's always gonna happen. Racism, local crime, people you absolutely hate that are still there, crumbling infrastructure. But goddamn, man, no one understands you like the people who raised you and the people surrounding the people who raised you. It's truly a culture, a collection of stereotypes and mentalities that shaped you into the person you are today. And yeah, you might have cherry-picked off the bad shit that you don't want in your life, but the the kernel of you still lies within the pavement cracks of your hometown. The hometown is where you should be every once in a while. You should visit there. And also, uh, the people where you, you come from say, say words like Western, North Central, Northeastern, Phila, area, Pitts. What the fuck is this? American dialects? Wait, is this the different accents? Wow. Which one are you guys? I feel like Georgia, Florida are very different. I think people in Florida don't have accents. I think it's just a mix of everything because the majority of people that live in Florida are not from Florida. I think maybe Northern Florida would have accents, but like South Florida, like Miami, like it's just going to be a bunch of people. South Carolina, North Carolina, I think sound the same. Like you say. Like, you, they don't make fun of you for saying pecan instead of pecan. So, that's nice. New videos every Saturday. Show this video to your mom if uh, you need to explain to her why you don't visit that often. <laughs> Show this video to your mom. 10,000. Right. Max chat. Oh, now we're going to do the Christmas movies ultimate list. And then we got two more reactions. We'll do a little bit of gaming. North for the sub to baby for the sub quads for the three. Oh, wait, chat. Do you guys want to do the, the ultimate Christmas movie... Uh, like battle fucking bracket first or Santa's horrifying evolution first? Which one? Cause we'll separate, we'll separate the other videos. Cause I'll have one, I'll do a Christmas one, regular one, and then a Christmas one. Do a poll mods. I don't even know if I have mods in my chat. I saw mods in my chat. I do have mods in my chat. When do you guys have family shit to do? I did not think that people would be in my chat today. Blue for the sub. But that's also why I streamed early, so there was a higher chance of that. Shaquille for the thousand biddies. Just wanted to, uh, to say your stream has been a highlight of my birthday today. Your stream's always brought a smile to my face. Keep up the great work. Thanks for making my day even more special. Thank you. Right now, are you, bla are you watching me on, like, the family TV? It's just, like, the whole family? Bro, that's hilarious. There's probably one kid in my chat right now that's, like, on the family TV. And, like, the whole, the whole family's just, like, sitting there watching me right now. That'd be, like, really weird. I just start screaming. I just start fucking, I just start just yelling. Hold up. 
Fucking with some wet ass pussy. Bring a bucket and a mop for this wet ass pussy. Give me everything you got. Put this All right, they turned me off. This is where the mom starts. This is where the mom starts yelling. The grandma's like, "Turn that shit off! Turn that shit off!" Wet ass pussy. Beat it up, nigga. Catch a charge. Extra large and extra hard. Just on the family TV. Hold up, I'll get him to turn it off. This pussy right in your face. Swipe your nose like a credit card. Hop on top. I wanna ride. I do a kegel. Run and side. Spit in my mouth. Look in my eyes. This pussy is wet. Come take a dive. Tie me up like I'm surprised. That's role play. I wear the skies. I want you to park that. All right, they're not watching us anymore. Sage for the sub. All right, which one are we doing, mods? Did we run that poll? Michael for the three. In the mil in the military, not being able to go home. So thanks for streaming, making the holidays a little bit better uh, for us that can't go home. Well, I mean, I'm glad I could out, man. And Michael, uh, thank you for the three hundred buddies. Happy holidays, bro. My mom literally walked past me. What the fuck? <laughs> You're like, what? They're like, what are you watching? What? Are you what are you watching right now? Yo, mods. God damn it. My mods. My mods aren't here, chat. Which? Which first? Santa vid or the movie ranking thing? <gasps> oh my god. All right, we'll go back to the regular Christmas music so they so they stop freaking out. Yo, do you think anybody made an AI cover of me singing a Christmas song? Probably. Oh no, they posted this though. Craziest thing ever. Oh God. Well, make me happy with the toy on Christmas Day. I just want you for my own, more than you could ever know. Make my wish come true. All I want for Christmas is you. Uh. Uh, all right, we'll have a little vibe music in the back while we do this little ranking. Hold up. Non-copyright Christmas music. Here it is. All right. Chat, y'all ready to rock this? Who do you think is going to win off rep? Looking at this, it seems like Home Alone wins the most. Home Alone, Home Alone 2, How the Grinch Stole Christmas, Polar Express, Elf, Nightmare Before Christmas. I don't know if I would say that's a Christmas movie. Die Hard, Klaus, Christmas Story, Muppets, Christmas Carol, Gremlins, Batman Returns, Charlie Brown Christmas, Christmas Carol, Edward Scissorhands, Jingle All the Way, Love Actually, Arthur Christmas, Bad Santa, Santa Claus, The Movie, Spirited, Jack Frost, The Holiday, A Night Before, Scrooge, Snowman, Home Alone 3, Bad Santa 2, Black Christmas, Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey, A Christmas Tale, and Black Black, Black Lippa is the ones that are on this list today. All right. Off rep. Wow. Um, Elf versus A Christmas Story. I feel like this is fairly simple. Um, just because El like, I'm, I don't, I don't know if Elf's going to win because I'll see how the matchups work, but I would say Elf is very, very much I don't know if that's the right term, like very much better or much better uh, than A Christmas Story. Christmas Story is still a good movie though. Still a good movie. Silent Night, Evil Night, um, Black Christmas. I don't think I've ever seen this. And The Polar Express. I actually used to not like The Polar Express. It used to scare me. You know that one scene in Polar Express where he's walking through the doll room with that homeless guy and it's like they're all hanging there it used to like all borderline give me nightmares it was really fucking scary uh but i like polar express now i also like i i started out stream with the hot chocolate song because that's like the fucking goaded song with tom hanks the holiday with jack black or klaus chat I don't know if y'all have ever seen... I know Klaus... I'm assuming y'all have probably seen Klaus before just because The Holiday is a fucking romance movie. But The Holiday's been out for a while. Klaus is a really good fucking movie. 
Like a really good fucking movie. I, I saw it for the first time last year. And it, I loved it. So we're going Klaus. Die Hard or Santa Claus the movie? Die Hard? Die Hard's more popular. But the issue with Die Hard is that it's not a fucking Christmas movie. Right? Die Hard, you know, is a Christmas movie in, like, the last scene. It's, like, just because it's on Christmas Day doesn't... Like, okay, this is the question here, chat. If the movie is set on Christmas, is it a Christmas movie? No. Because I would say a Christmas movie is about Christmas. We're about the holidays. Whereas Die Hard is a fucking action film. That has nothing to do with Christmas. It's just on Christmas. Even after saying that, I'm still going to pick Die Hard. Jingle Jangle, A Christmas Journey, or Spirited. I haven't seen either of these. Uh, I really wanted to watch Spirited, but I heard that Spirited is a really shitty movie. And that it was uh, overhyped and then underperformed because it has Ryan Reynolds and Will Ferrell, two, like, goats. Uh, but it's, like, a fucking shitty movie. Spirit, it's okay. I've never seen Jingle Jangle, though. I've never seen either of them. It's shitty, but it's funny. Spirit, it's mid. Spirit, it's a musical. Yeah, I don't know about a musical. I don't know why they would make that. People are still saying Spirited, though, so I'll go with that. A Charlie Brown Christmas or Edward Scissorhands? Is Edward Scissorhands even on Christmas Day? Why the fuck is Edward Scissorhands? I gotta look that up. Is Edward Scissorhands a Christmas movie? It's been said to be a Christmas movie as the film leads up to a planned Christmas party at the home where Edward is living. I mean, yeah. I haven't seen Edward Scissorhands in forever, though. Charlie Brown Christmas is more nostalgic. I just fucking hate Charlie Brown. I hate Charlie Brown so much. Just because it's, it's always, like, the cringy-ass fucking jokes that are from, like, the 1970s or whenever the fuck this movie was made. And, and just that song. I, I will say a Charlie Brown Christmas is probably the best one. The Thanksgiving Charlie Brown sucks. I'm going to go with Charlie Brown Christmas just because I don't, I don't really think Edward Scissorhands counts. A Christmas Tale or a Muppet's Christmas Carol? I've never seen a Christmas Tale. I've seen a Muppet's Christmas Carol. I'm going to go Muppets. Love Actually, which is a really popular romance movie for Christmas, or Jingle All the Way? With fucking Arnold. And uh, who else is in, who else is in uh, Jingle All the Way? Oh my god. Who else is in Jingle All the Way? Uh, fucking, what's his name? Uh, what actor is in Jingle All the Way? Somebody will know. Somebody will know. Turbo Man? Yeah, well that's, that's the toy that they want. Sinbad. I'll go Jingle All the Way. I've never even heard of this. What the fuck is Flack Lippa? I gotta look that up. And Bad Santa too. Bad Santa is a pretty good movie. I like the spin-offs. I do I do enjoy the Christmas movies that aren't like the wholehearted ones. Like that's why I kinda don't like Elf as much as I used to. Hold up. Flack Lippa trailer. Let's watch the trailer for this. What old ass movie is filmed just like this? With the fucking, I don't think that's on this list. What's that old ass Christmas movie with the fucking Heatmeister? Oh wait, no, that's Heatmeister versus Snowmeister. What's the one where it's like the old guy and the big snow villain, like Rudolph? Oh, I'm kind of upset those aren't in this. Yeah, like Rudolph. When was that? When was that filmed? 
1939. Oh, wait, no. Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, 1964. That's so fucking long ago. Jack Frost. It might be Jack Frost. No, it's not Jack Frost. What's the one? What's the really old one where, like, toys are outlawed? Movie where toys are outlawed. The Burgermeister versus Santa Claus is coming to town. Santa Claus is coming to town. This movie. Chat, did y'all ever watch this? This movie is fucking so scary. And it's also like, dude, he's, this guy, literally just Hitler. Like, I, like, it's, it's like, it's like a weird, convoluted fucking, like, dictator where he'll, like, like, all borderline execute people for playing with toys. And then this guy, and he, like, flirts with her. It's such a weird movie. And it's, like, it's, like, so old, so it's filmed in that weird, like, doll shit where they have to, like, stop motion film it and, like, move them. And they're, like, and they don't, they don't actually talk. They just move their mouth. I gotta find a scene. Santa Claus is probably, we could probably watch that for free. How long is it until you can watch movies without copyright? It's probably almost that old. That movie is, that movie got filmed in 1970. It's 53 years old. Oh yeah, the whole film's on YouTube. I kind of vibed with it. I kind of vibed with it. I think I looked spiffy. No, yes. Do a poll on that. Ah, Shaggy for the sub. Oh, Patriot TNS for the sub. All right, we'll watch this, the last Santa thing, and then we'll get we'll get into some gaming. TikToker breaks into a house for a video. Walking into straight. Okay. All right. That's a little loud. That's a little loud. Just a little loud. Turn that down a little bit. Walking into strangers' houses. Oh, I forgot the fucking lighter. Hold up. 
Chat, count me down 20 seconds. Bang. It's a fucking Zippo letter. Hold up. ASMR. It doesn't have butane in it right now, so I'm not going to light it. Fucking. It's so fun just doing this. What happened to the Papa Me? Are you going to react to it after this? Yeah. Frank. <laughs> okay, what the fuck is going on? TikToker breaks into a house for a video. Walking into strangers' houses, Frank. <laughs> I'm literally in so many people's way. <laughs> Guys, don't you want to high five me? <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, my hand. You think you would get kicked out of a store for for acting like that? Probably. I don't think they're gonna they're gonna keep you there. Uh, but I mean, he's clearly just being obnoxious for the video. It has been forced. Today, I saw a TikTok so bad that my moral compass wouldn't allow me to not make a video on it. It's not easy being a good guy, people. Now, a question I get asked a lot by you guys is how do I find all of these people that I make videos on? And the honest truth is just a combination of being on the internet too much and going out and looking for them. Can't believe I just revealed my secret like that, but hey, I'm an open guy. And with this never-ending search, there are a lot of people, lots of videos, lots of TikTokers, lots of individual stories, whatever, that I just never end up making a video on. And this is normally because even if I think what I'm seeing is video worthy, there might just not be enough to it. It might just be like one small isolated incident that's not really enough to talk about. So what ends up happening a lot is I'll come across something, decide not to make a video on it, and then months later the situation will develop, something new will happen, and I'll be like, okay, it's time. And that's exactly what's happened today with a video I saw from a TikToker named Dennis the Menace. Now some of you might recognize- Dennis the Menace. This guy, like six months to a year ago, he was kind of going viral for this video series he was doing where he was saying, no one cares what you do in public, and he would go into public and act like an absolute psychopath. Now, when I first saw these TikToks- shaving his fucking head? I was considering making a video on him just because what he was doing was so lame, but for whatever reason, I ended up deciding against it. So that was until today when I saw a TikTok that he more recently uploaded where he goes a step further from just going into a target and yelling like a psychopath, and he does something that I think needs to be talked about. We're going to look at some of his older videos too today, but we're going to start with this one because that's the reason this video is getting made. Prepare to get angry. Let's begin. Please subscribe. Walking into strangers Oh house. my god, dude, like who is- he better be paying the fucking photographer or the fucking film guy. Like I am not walking around with this dude for free when he's fucking yapping like that. This is Frank. <laughs> Let's try this one. Let's try this one. Breaking into houses? Hello? I'm going to rob the- Ah, it's probably fake. He probably knows the guy. <laughs> yeah, so right off the bat. Even so, that that'd be an insane thing to do. Like if you walked up to somebody's ring doorbell and acted like that, and you're in a state where there's a stand your ground law, you're not getting off that fucking property alive. <laughs> you're you're gonna die. I'm sure you can tell this guy is pretty cool. This is basically his shtick. He goes around in public being a general nuisance and just kind of acting unhinged. Normally, he's in a grocery store yelling stuff, doing this stupid laugh that he does. But in this TikTok, he's decided to take it to a neighborhood. So he walks up to this guy's ring doorbell, says, I'm going to rob this place, and then walks away, says, okay, he's going to call the police. Let's go to the house across the street. Now, while what he's done already in this video is insane, it's gross, it should be grounds to be banned off TikTok. If you read their community guidelines, Lines, it wouldn't sound like things like this would be allowed, but what he's gonna do next is just a whole new level of insanity, and again, it's why this video is being made. Out to the house across the street! <laughs> oh shit. Okay, maybe, uh... I mean, what are the odds you would know the people that are right across from you, too, and they're allowing that you, you would do this? Like, I assumed that he would just know the guy in the one house. Maybe it's not fucking fake. 
Bro, no one's house is unlocked. Sometimes the back door could be open. Let's see what we got back cooking in the backyard. <laughs> oh my God, look at this. I'm literally in somebody's house. <laughs> yeah, there were people right there though. Literally in somebody's house. Are they calling the cops? <laughs> yeah, this is content in 2023. So I don't know if this is staged or not. I feel like it's not. To me, if you were going to stage something like this, you would stage a reaction and not just have what looks like a teenage girl peek around the corner looking terrified because she just saw someone break into her home. So I feel like this is real. Which leads me to the question, how does a person manage to get to such- Yo, you see that one video, the guy that got shot that does these prank videos? Off topic, but I feel like this is that scenario where it's like, you're doing this shit, like, dude, somebody's gonna kill you. Like, one day you're gonna get murdered, you know? Like, you're walking around fucking with people like that, no? He was at some mall, and he was, like, harassing this guy, and he was, like, like just whispering in his ear and shit, and he wouldn't stop following him. And he was like, bro, stop following me. And the guy was like, no, and then kept following him, and then he just pulled out a gun and shot him in the fucking stomach. He lived. Uh, and the guy didn't get arrested. Because <laughs> the guy was just like, dude, he was threatening me. Like, this, like, I, like, he just shot him in the fucking chest. They're not in the chest, in the stomach. He didn't die, but. A low point. Show in the their... video? Yeah, I don't think I could show that life how do you get so desperate for internet attention internet validation whatever it might or be Or there was another one where he like fake robbed an atm and the guy just broke his fucking nose like there's been so many pranks like youtube pranksters that have gotten like almost killed like the, sh the shooting one was the most insane but there was another guy that like he faked robbing a woman at an atm and the big the, the big guy behind, like in front of him just turned around and fucking nailed just just like nailed him in the face shattered his nose he started gushing blood beam that you are willing to break into someone's home and film it and maybe a better question what is wrong with these seventy-five thousand people that follow this guy i mean this seriously might be the worst thing i've ever seen from tiktok we've seen another person do this that mizzy guy i covered a few months ago and since the internet has absolutely ruined the minds of millions of people here we are comparing home invasion pranks i think mizzy's was a lot better because at least he just acted like he walked into the wrong home said he was looking for a study group this guy walks in and decides to act like a caveman who yeah. was recently thawed and introduced back to society. I mean, if this wasn't staged, this guy is seriously lucky he walked into this particular home. Because honestly, I think a lot of people in America see a fully grown man acting this way in a home they weren't invited into. Uh, there's gonna- Even if- even if they don't kill him, like, if somebody did this to an average person's house, they're probably gonna beat the fuck out of you. Like, with a bat or with whatever fucking weapon they have. Like, this guy's walking into their backyard. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if he walks in and somebody just charges him with a knife or something like that. ...be an incident, and I think it would probably be justified. We talked about this in that Yeah, you would not get in trouble. If he did this and somebody, like, came around the corner and fucking shot him store robbery prank video how it's very easy to forget as the audience that the people who are on the other side of the camera don't know this is a prank a person acting like this who just broke into your home i don't know how you wouldn't see this as an immediate threat i mean seriously i don't know how else to put it is it going to take somebody getting killed for people to stop being so stupid i really try not to throw around names when i make these videos i always try to keep them very constructive but i feel like in this instance it's objectively true if this is not staged this guy is an idiot if you do this you are asking to be shot by yeah. someone defending their home and their children and their family. I mean, I try not to get heated when I make these videos, but it's just insane to me that people like this exist and that there are parents out there who have failed their children who now follow this guy and think stuff like this is funny. I really, really hope this is fake, but knowing the other videos that this guy has made, the ones you're about to see, my hopes are not high. No one actually cares what you do. Watch this. I, can well, I feel like these are his older videos. He's gotten more and more extreme. Because, like, if you're one of these content creators, that's another thing that you got to do, right? Like, if you're a prankster and you're fucking with people, you can't just stay stagnant and do the same thing over and over again. So he has to, like, be more and more dickheadish until it's going to get to the point where either he has to stop making content, falls off, or uh, gets himself, like, incredibly injured or, like, arrested from breaking into somebody's house.
Um, and I feel like I saw, I've seen a clip of this guy get arrested. I don't know if it was real or not, though. All right. Daddy 05 situation. What is the Daddy 05 situation? Wasn't that like a family, like a YouTuber family or some shit like that? Joe, you smoke? Not often. Uh, and I don't smoke cigarettes. Uh, like, I'll smoke weed, but not frequently. Uh, yeah, it was like the family YouTubers and they got their shit taken away. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The Daddy O5 where they would like film their kid have like a tantrum. Is that the family that I'm thinking of? I think so. All right. Literally go right into this target and just be an absolute menace. Guys, don't you want to high five me? <laughs> I also wouldn't say this is being a menace. Like, what is, like, what would you guys describe as being a menace? Like, you're just being a dumbass. A menace is a person or thing that is likely to cause harm. Yeah, like, if you're a menace, I feel like you'd go into a Walmart and start breaking shit. Like, that's a menace. Like, hey, guys, I'm going to be a menace in Target today. And you just start smashing their TVs. Like, that's a menace. Like, you just said, hey, guys, who wants to high-five me? Uh, uh, and then got on your knees. <laughs> okay, so I know I make a lot of jokes about studies on this channel, like saying a person needs to be studied. But being completely serious here for a minute, I think that a study on guys like this would be genuinely helpful. Just trying to dive into the brain of people who are willing to do whatever it takes to get attention on the internet. You know, the rich pianas of TikTok clout. I think it might actually shed some light on what the internet is doing to the population. Because, I mean, it's one thing if a person is just genuinely unwell and they need some real medical help and that causes them to go out in public and do something like this this is not what that is if there was not a camera rolling this guy would not be doing this for a person yeah. to be willing to break every like right when this ends he probably just i always i always wish i could see when the when the video ends you know like he's sitting there and he's like uh, uh, and screaming and then it's like they cut the video he's like all right we got it and there and then he just goes stands up just walks out no problem single societal behavioral like standard probably get the that they fuck were presumably out of raised with for a TikTok. Surely we should be trying to figure out the cause for that, right? I can literally scream random dates at people and no one cares. January 14th, 2023. March 7th, 2023 at 11 p.m. I swear if this video gets copyright claimed because of this runaway instrumental in the background, I'm going to lose my mind. Another very telling characteristic of these videos is that it's all based off the premise that this guy is realizing you can do whatever you want in public. And upon realizing this, what this guy decides to go do is basically just harass people. Yell at them, scream at them, make a scene in public, purposely make people... Is that like a threat, though? Like, if you walk up to somebody and you're like... January 10th, 5.32 p.m. I'd be like, what, are you going to kill me? Like, what do you mean? Comfortable. Not go around and like... Yeah, that'd be like a threat. Compliment people. Or go do a few good deeds. No, when this guy realized he had free will, all he wanted to do is harass people trying to get some groceries. No one actually cares what you do. Watch this. I can literally just lay here and nobody cares. Guys, aren't I just laying here? I'm literally in so many people's way. <laughs> I can just ask people for hugs and they're going to forget about it in minutes. Hug me! One of y'all better hug me right now. See? That's the worst thing that they could possibly do. I honestly think the craziest part about these videos is this guy's following and his comment sections. Because it's really not that hard to believe that there would be a single guy out there who found this funny. Who found Is he making money on this though? Because his videos aren't a minute long. And the regular TikTok creator fund's going away. So he's doing this for effectively nothing. In like a month. I mean the, the regular creator fund exists. But it, I don't know if y'all knew this or not. They're not paying. They only paid creators for minute or for they'll, they'll pay. There's two different creator funds right now. Regular creator fund, which just pays for views. And then there's a minute plus creator fund, which only pays for minute or longer videos, but they pay more. But they're getting rid of the regular creator fund, I believe, uh, soon. So I don't know how or why he would continue to do this.
doing stuff like this in public. Because if this gets like 500k views and it's like, even, even if he continued to make this money, say this gets a million views and this is a 20 second video, he made $30. Like, that's not, is that worth it? No, I feel like maybe doing this for like a grand is different, but like he probably made like 30 bucks enjoyable but what is kind of hard to believe is that there are seemingly hundreds of thousands of people who think the same way if you go through this guy's account and you look at the comments most of them what was his name dennis the menace i want to i want to see what he pulls view wise dennis the menace tiktok like he doesn't get that many views like, I, I I mean, this one, he got two million views to fucking robbing somebody's house. Walking into stranger's house is prank. <laughs> Let's try this one. Let's try this one. His house. <laughs> oh, that was posted in June. Wow, bro, you must be tripping, tripping. Dude, you should have not taken that many tabs. We're going to go into this restaurant real quick, but don't worry. It's just for a quick bite to eat. Attention, everybody, attention. This guy is on acid! We're going to ride jail, buddy! Let's circle around him until the police show up! <laughs> Do you hear the woman in the back yelling at them? <laughs> wow, bro, you must- And then- and then right when the video cuts- Oh, sorry, ma'am, we're leaving. Sorry, it was for a video. Oh, my apologies, my apologies. And then they- and then they walk out. Like... <laughs> You're getting head under the water. She's milking you, bro. She's milking you. Ten ninety nine for. You're getting head at the Arby's. She's milking you, bro. She's milking you. Now you have the meats. <laughs> well, I've never seen someone take that many mushrooms in my life. No. No one actually cares what you. Yo, Dennis, what? Johnny Sin's dead at 44. Johnny Sin's the ultimate splurger? No! What do you think his age demographic is? Like, the Johnny Sin's the ultimate splurger was the joke. Like, yeah, like 10. Like probably yeah, probably like the youngest TikTok audience. I mean, my TikTok's all my TikTok audience is the youngest audience comparable to my other platforms. But I would still say like e even my TikTok audience is pro has to be older than his. POV, I catch you getting sloppy at the Walmart checkout aisle. You're getting head in the Walmart checkout aisle. She's milking you, bro. She's milking you. Employees, tell me where I can get a banana just like that. <laughs> Yo, bro, I forgot to record. Nah, that would be fucking hilarious. Yo, you're like, yeah, man, I'll record it for you. And you're just like, you're like recording your face while he's doing it. And you're like, oh, dude, I forgot to flip the camera. You got to do it again. Oh, we got to walk back in. Them are positive. Like one of the top few comments will always be something about this guy's confidence is insane. I mean, how do you see this and then attribute a positive characteristic to this guy? I mean, seriously, this has nothing to do with confidence. This is an extreme sense of entitlement, a total disregard to the people around you. I mean, you go into a store and you scream something, you do something stupid for a one-off TikTok, whatever. Nobody really cares, right? But to do this dozens and dozens of times, the same shtick over and over again, there's a difference yeah. between being self-confident and not really like giving doing up. It one, and, and I think there's other areas where you could do it and it's funny. Where it's like, you, 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 remember, you remember the videos where they like started out with like, it was like the early prank shit. Where they'd be in a Walmart and they'd accidentally drop like a gallon of milk. And they'd just fucking slam it on the ground and like slip. Like those were funny. Because you're not really like hot. It, it's not like being obnoxious. It's just like it's something that you fuck up and then you're probably going to have to clean it up. So it's like, yeah, it, 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 it's still annoying, but it's not as bad. A whole lot of thought about what the people around you. Because they aren't cleaning it. Well, if they aren't cleaning it, then it's dickhead shit.
But if they're like, yo, give me the mop, then I think that's fine. Think when it comes to stuff like what you wear, what you like to do, things of that nature. But that does not mean that you should go out into public and make it your number one priority to be a nuisance and bother people for sport. Those two things are not the same. Now we could keep going through this guy's TikToks, but truthfully they're all the same. He walks into a public space, yells a few questionable things, does that laugh he likes to do, and then cuts the video. I really feel like there is a problem with the internet as a whole when it comes to social media and not cracking down on stuff like this. I mean, I understand that stuff like this is not necessarily against a lot of social media platforms community guidelines, but I feel like these bigger platforms like YouTube and TikTok have to have some sort of responsibility in this. Now you can make the argument that content like this is not necessarily harming anybody, and I might partially agree, but I don't think that's a very good argument. Social media platforms allowing videos like this and stuff of this nature, I'm not just talking about this guy in particular, and allowing them to blow up and get millions of views. And I make think social media should allow people to do this. I, I think this is fine. I, I think it's just he, he's going to deal with the people being like, dude, you're a fucking wacko. The people who made them famous is undoubtedly encouraging people They're already telling him to leave. to copy this behavior. Now am I saying that these videos where he's walking around a grocery store and just being annoying should be deleted off TikTok? Not necessarily, but am I saying the video where he breaks into a person's house should be deleted off okay, of TikTok? Okay, that's different. Talk? Absolutely, and I think that should have gotten him banned. I mean, there's got to be some sort of line that these social media platforms draw where they're like, okay, everything up to this point is harmless enough, but past this point we can't encourage this kind of behavior and we can't help the people engaging in this behavior get famous. I mean, it's just like that YouTube prankster who got shot a couple of months ago. Who Bro, I literally just said that the guy that got a fucking nose smashed. All right, I'm done watching this. All right, some man for the five, uh, nine, seven, eight for the sub, lot for the thousand biddies. Merry Christmas, Jones, Christmas in Sweden. I'm not great for the sub. Uh, Azua and Shaggy for the sub. Oh, Pantry, TNS for the sub. Uh, Joseph for the three. Uh, go Crystal Meth for Christmas this year. Don't know. Don't know how I feel now, but I felt great at the time. Dream for the sub, Gavin for the three. Name your top five Christmas movies. Night Before Elf would still be in the top five all time. If I'm going all time, yeah. Right now, it's not in the top five. But all time Christmas movies, Elf, Polar Express, Night Before. Probably Bad Santa. And then Klaus. Tyler Durden for the sub. McClowns for the five. I uh, hope you and Chad have a great Christmas. Quas for the sub. Penny for the 2007, uh, 300 biddies. Is Violent Night not on there? No. I, I haven't seen Violent Night either. I need to see that movie. Is Violent Night good? Did that uh, Voyager and Dan for the sub. Uh, and thank you, Penny, for the fucking 2,300 biddies. Christine for the sub. Sub for the five. And Joseph for the three. Give me five minutes in the ring with this guy, please. I want to beat him up. And 978 for the three. All right, hold up. I will watch the, re the last two minutes. After getting shot because he was pulling a stupid YouTube prank, said he was going to continue making similar pranks. So we've got a guy on YouTube who was already pushed. Dude, getting shot and then saying, I'm going to continue this content is nuts. Prank to the point of getting violent, just like thousands of other pranksters on this website. Who is Night Before Christmas is a Halloween movie. I said the night before, not the night before Christmas. Night Before has Seth Rogen... All those motherfuckers, the one that I was showing the funny clips of, Night Before Christmas is different. ...is going to continue to use YouTube to do it again. I mean, I genuinely have made a video on this website where I talk about a guy being kind of weird for covering himself in peanut butter for his YouTube channel that got age-restricted because it was deemed not safe for children, but videos like the one I covered last week where a guy robs a store as a YouTube prank is A-OK, -okay, baby. That would never encourage a young kid to do something stupid, right? No, peanut butter is what we need to save our children from. I mean, seriously, at some point we gotta stop letting these social media platforms off the hook. And it's always the same tagline, POV. I get it. I catch you getting sloppy in the library, in the Walmart. She's milking you! She's milking you! Bah! If you wanna allow like, content- Say something different. Like this on your platform, okay? 
do it, but then don't try and parade as this child-friendly environment. If you demonetize people and age-restrict people for saying a few no-no words, but then let content like this run rampant among those oh-so-impressionable audiences, your actions are performative. Either follow your own guidelines or just don't have them. I mean, there is literally a section in the YouTube community guidelines barring dangerous or threatening pranks. Pranks that lead victims to fear imminent serious physical danger or that create serious emotional distress in minors. Yet you have a guy on YouTube YouTube who was recently shot because the prank he pulled put someone in fear for their life. That guy was then found not guilty by a jury. I, I don't think he was actually, I don't think he was actually in fear for his life. I think it was proven that he was in fear for his life, but I watched the video. I would not be in fear for my life, but the way the guy was acting, put a little, put a little dent in, uh, put a little dent in the old fucking, uh, what's it called? Uh, self-confidence there when he harassed the guy for an hour straight and then got shot in the fucking stomach. Uh, Chunkles for the five gifteds. Uh, Jay JZX for the sub. Like, I don't think he was in fear for, li for his life, but if you're going to follow a guy around for 20 minutes straight for a video and nonstop harass him when he asks nicely for you to stop, and then it gets to the point where he's seriously telling you to stop and you keep doing it for the video, and then you get shot in the stomach, not, not surprising. Really not surprising. Proving that at least 12 people agreed that that prank was too far. Yet his channel's fine. The video where he talks about it is not age restricted, but my peanut butter video is. Oh, okay. No, that's fine. Well, guys, um, sorry. Did not mean to rant for the last like three minutes. What are y'all's thoughts? Am I getting a little bit too worked up over nothing? Sometimes I think he's right. Um, I don't think it's as serious as he's saying it is, but I, I would agree with whatever, basically everything he said. All right. Last video, and then we're going to fucking play some games. Evolution of Santa. Welcome back to the Papa Meat channel. How you doing? How you doing? And happy holidays to everybody. Even if you're not, you know, you sell, you, maybe you're one of those people who's like, yeah, I don't like the holidays because me and my dad don't get along. AKA every art school girl I've ever talked to, that's their story. Oh, you, go, you going home for Christmas break? Yeah, but I don't really know why. Me and my parents don't get along. It's like, well, you're so fucking jolly. That's kind of odd. But today I thought that we would go through basically the evolution of Santa, starting from what we know of him today, this beautiful... Oh, come here. Oh my God, Santa, stop. Oh my God. All the way back to his earliest conception, because... What the when... fuck is that? He was shoving a kid in a bag. Doing some research on this, you kind of find out that it's just as horrifying as anything else that we talk about on this channel. So let's talk about Santa Claus. Where'd he come from? Where's he going? Probably want to talk about where he's going. He's probably pretty much this guy here is probably that's probably it. Actually, that's not true. There could be something where Santa himself takes over Christ's image and he becomes a god. When I was a kid, Christmas was a big deal. Christmas was a big deal because Dude, Christmas it felt like Christmas. Like now it doesn't. I don't know. Wait, hold up. I'm trying to find a TikTok. To infinity and beyond. Like that just felt it just felt more like Christmas, dude. I don't know why. Um, hold up. It doesn't show, it doesn't snow anymore. It still snows, but it shows late, it snows later in the year than it used to. It'll snow in like fucking, uh, not, not, um, like, it won't snow in December, usually. It'll snow in, like, fucking February or March or some shit like that. Uh, Tati and Beer and Jax for the sub. 
fact it was like it was another act of faith in your life in a weird way as a child you have the allure that people are going to give you things but not only just give you things but everyone's a lot nicer everyone's more chipper people are wearing kind of the same thing green and well, red give you shit that you it's have as you age it's jolly. like presents are like as lost mesmerizing maybe i'm just too old now and i don't experience it like i used to but i miss those times and i love the big man i love the idea of having like a vigilante magic man that it's like everyone just universally agrees it's okay for him to break into your house and eat cookies and drink milk because <laughs> he just leaves you presents it's just like we have a child in this house and you're gonna break in and just you know he's just uh, i see you when you're sleeping and i know when you're awake so don't shut those eyes needless to say it's a big deal so i just want to talk about all the different kinds of santas because there's not just one there's a lot of them which starts off in the 2020s the now this is where we're at now we as a society and as a human it felt magical i remember waking up going downstairs and there was eaten carrots with with reindeer spit on the table in the in in the uh in the little uh plate that i left and i remember thinking to myself wow that's so that's so magical right there was reindeer there's reindeer at my at my house and santa was here and the cookies were eaten and i went and then i look back at it today and i'm like ah human race we are starting to do virtual santa Yuck. experiences where you can get on Yuck. zoom calls because of covid people now go on zoom calls with santa and that that's the new sitting on santa's lap and for people who are so you know not from this planet you would go to a mall maybe you would go somewhere and there'd be a santa and you'd sit on his lap and you would ask for a gift and he'd be like oh well i'll see what i be yeah, okay fine you'll get it but no longer now it's all just adopting older traditions to new day circumstances everything's online everything's digital and even Santa's big, soft, hot, sexy knee is uh, divided between a computer screen. Which also I just want to go to a mall, Santa, now and sit. I don't think they could hold my weight. I feel like they would tell me I'm not allowed to sit on them. If I went to a mall, Santa, I was like, can I sit on your lap and I'd tell you what I want for Christmas? They'd be like, no, you're going to crush me. Increasingly, Santa I did that two days ago. You sat on a mall, Santa's lap. In context for promoting sustainability, social justice, and other contemporary. I mean, I don't even like what age should you stop taking pictures with Santa? I don't remember the last. I feel like the last time I took a picture with Santa, I was probably like 11. Issues depictions have appeared featuring African American Santas as well as Santas in wheelchairs. We have a Santa for everybody now because back in the day, let me tell you, Santa didn't talk about any of that shit. It was just kind of like this is the Santa, tough shit. All right. Which looking back on it now, I would feel kind of, I feel kind of guilty. That's just what he is. Are we sure? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you know, no room for discussion. I will say the wheelchair one. Come on. He's magical. Like, I get the wheelchair inclusion of, like, disabled people and stuff like that. But who the fuck? I mean, like, what? Maybe he fucking asked for some legs, dude. It's horrible. Don't leave that in. But let's reverse the clock back just for like a decade. Uh -huh. Turn it back. The 2010s. High-tech Santa with advancements in technology around this time on Earth. We got Santa depicted in more high-tech scenarios, you know, reflecting the modern world's technological progress. I mean, Santa with phones. Santa's on his sleigh no longer has stupid-ass fucking reindeer. It's like powered by jets and all kinds of shit. This is an era where everything's moving at the speed of light. Internet's getting faster. iPhone just came out. The Blackberry's like, we're fucked. The amount of people probably asking Santa for an iPhone was probably astronomical. I never did and anyway. nobody got that fucking iphone yeah whatever you ask santa for christmas you, end up, you never end up getting it was poor I, you, let probably me because he uh, he can't tell um, okay i'm not uh, we're, gonna, we're gonna we're gonna move on poverty you realize santa is not real very quickly <laughs> okay are you tired of having this what do you mean santa's not real the fuck you mean santa's not real same old browser time and time again i want oh he has a little slideshow the ad all of your needs be wow, sure to check him out ad. fuck you nick you know what i had i had the rhapsody dude my mom got me a rhapsody and didn't play videos and it came with three all-american reject songs i'm pretty sure it's that one song where it's like when darkness turns to light <laughs> it 
ends tonight. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Let's go back another 10 years. In the early 2000s, Santa becomes a global icon, recognized in many countries around the world, even those without strong Christmas traditions, all right? So that's when he found out that people- Yeah, that's like really when Santa started popping off around the world. And if you don't like Christmas- But he had to start giving more presents. Too fucking bad, dude. He's here. He's like Ronald McDonald. Like it or not, that motherfucker's here to stay. The rise of digital and social- oh, I loved that video. Fuck, I remember watching that shit. It leads to new interpretations of Santa, including online games, apps, and digital storytellings. It's still the same old Santa. The that hell was that? Digital and social media leads to new interpretations of Santa, including online games, apps, and digital story. The twinkling light rains down like falling snow, giving a luster of jolliness to the figure below. Storytellings. It's still the same old. That Santa was Jack. Santa that we know and love, but he's getting introduced to all the new. Play kids that game. I should. Online. And this is back in the day when people a were Santa like, "A Santa visual don't novel." Know what the internet is. Uh, MySpace. What is that? You had those kind of conversations, and then you had a cool ass Santa on a MySpace page that's just like, "Let me finger fuck you." Probably that guy what? impersonating him. I don't think the real Saint Nick would do that because Saint Nick's got a boo. This is Claus. Did you ever play Neopets? I never played Neopets. Nick, don't interrupt me again, okay? In the 1990s, the early stages of the internet era see Santa image being used in digital advertisements and early online content. In the 90s, it was a, it was a more hip time. Sure, you know, the internet was just coming out. The technological boom hadn't quite happened. When did Santa come to be? Like when, I mean, he's probably going to answer that in this video, but when did Santa really, I feel like probably like the 1800s, like the late 1800s. Not, I mean, like the 1920s, Santa was still, is still definitely a thing. Happened yet. Also, Tim Allen. Since Alex forever. And was like, I am Santa and I'm going to be him multiple times. And if anything, the Santa Claus movie is kind of fucking scary because a man died on his roof, fell off. And then he, they're just like, you're cursed now. Did you want this? And he's like, well, I guess I did. You know what I mean? How fucked is that? In the movie, is there a way for them to, for him to even not be Santa? He's just Santa. Yeah, he's like, I don't want this. Hey, he's like, you I don't put it on. You put the coat on. Yeah, Sorry. God forbid you, which also at the same time, if a man died there, well, to be fair, the, his body, Obi-Wan Kenobi'd, right? It just fucking was gone. And he was cold. <laughs> okay, I'd put on the jacket. All right. I was trying to find some plot holes. I would but... not put on a dead person's jacket. He died. If, if a guy falls on your roof, dies, and then disintegrates, are you going to put on his clothing? Seems good. I will say the, the first Tim Allen Santa Claus movie is pretty good. The other two I would skip. Or the other five. I think there's a show now. I don't know. First one's pretty good. <laughs> we go back to when America was on top in the 80s. In the 1980s, see a rise in Santa's image being... Joe, Google says you were born in 1989. I was born in 2002. You're older than my mom. Buddy, I'm really betting that you are not old enough to be in my chat right now if your mother was born in 1989. Your mom is 33, if I'm doing my math correctly. I don't I really don't believe that you you are old enough to be in my chat. Like I your your mom's 33 years old. That's a young mother. That is a young mother. What chatter was that? Being used for commercial purposes with a focus on gift giving and shopping. Reaganomics, baby. Capitalism at its finest. Santa's just like, I don't know. Why do I have to do it? Why don't you just buy it? Why do I have to be the one to fucking make stuff? It'd be kind of funny if it was like a really aggressive ad campaign. Why do I have to do it? You have money in your pocket. Why don't you fucking buy it, dude? Different cultures start adapting Santa to their own traditions. Through the core imagery of the red suit and white beard remains largely consistent. So now it just becomes a thing where it's just like, you know, the 80s, you got people doing blow. Top Gun probably just came out. Motley Crue is somehow the most popular band in the world. And then Santa Motley Crue is a fucking fire band. Don't you diss Motley Crue. Kickstart My Heart is a fucking fire ass song. Now I'm about to play that shit. That is insane. Girls, girls, girls. It's all good. Chad, if you could play one song as good as the artist that played it, what song would it be? Freedom. 
Freebird. I'm literally solo singing, singing and playing Freebird. I feel like that's that's definitively the best one. Just because you're like a badass. If you could play, if you could play the two minute guitar solo in Freebird. <laughs> be like you'd be like a, a fucking sick motherfucker that or i'd be like i'd be playing some like five finger death punch type shit like some hard metal. i would love to be able to play a guitar like this like that'd be badass playing that is just showing up in different cultures because it's just so iconic. This thing right here that we see. Oh, or Hotel California. Oh. If I could play the entire Hotel California song and sing it. Hold up, hold up. The chorus. Right. There she stood in the doorway. No problem. The Hotel California. Just playing the guitar, no problem. Just kicked up, knee up. You're just fucking singing that shit. He's been looking like this forever. He got nice big old beard on him. You know, the red jacket. It's impossible. No one can wear a red jacket again without being like, what is it, Christmas? Isn't that fucked up? And if you're like, oh, I don't care. You're probably like an incel guy who's doing like anime poses in his room. You look like fucking like a, like a doofus Santa, dude. Pack it up. We go to the 70s, in which Santa starts appearing in various forms of media, including animated series, comic strips, and advertisements, often with slight variations, but keeping the core image consistent. The 70s, yeah, sure. We're into disco. We're doing even more coke. We're dancing. I thought 80s was disco. We're fucking. We're not hippies anymore, but still, we like to. We like to have sex and dance. But our Santa is still pretty conservative. You know, now we're. This is where we start to see Santa doesn't really change too much. He's showing up in other stuff, but Santa, he, he's staying right where he's at. Which in the 60s, now you have all the yeah, classic all the trippy people taking acid and shit. Anime movie. Yeah, one dollar acid tabs at that fucking. What was that one? What was that one thing that everybody went to in the 60s and they always fucking talk about that shit and everybody's like, oh, I wish I could live in the 60s so I could go to what? What is that called? Woodstock. Boom. But he got it immediately. Movies Rudolph, Red Nose Reindeer. Pretty One dollar acid tabs at Woodstock. That's where the Abominable Snowman's from. All that crazy, creepy stop motion shit. That yeah. was all 60s stuff. You have the now familiar form influencing children's perception of little rosy red cheek Santa. Little small boy Santa. Him, who are coming in, and at this point in the 60s, you know, we're like 30 years into what this new design is. So while it's not the newest thing in the world, I feel like a lot of young kids are still, this is their first understanding of what Santa Claus even is. And then we keep turning back the clock to the 50s. Which in the 50s, with the rise of the television, Santa begins appearing in numerous TV shows and commercials, further spreading his standardized image. What happens that, you know- Damn, Santa getting lit! Off that fucking tobacco unfiltered. Guard against throat scratch. Smooth smoking of fine tobaccos. Smoke Paul Mall. Pa Paul Mall. The cigarette whose mildness you can measure. Study the puff chart. Standardized image. What happens that, you know, has been still trickling a little bit today. We get more. Dude, I loved how they used to tell people that cigarettes were good for you. Like, doctors were like, yeah, you should smoke cigarettes. Santa's, because back in the 50s, malls, that's where dads got their cock sucked by other men because they were too afraid to come out as being gay. And that's also where you got a bicycle. I miss malls. One of my malls had a hot air balloon thing in it. You didn't ride it, but it would, it would go up and down. It just looked nice. There's a lot of fountains. It doesn't matter. The mall Santa. The tradition of mall Santa has become increasingly popular in the United States, making Santa a regular feature in shopping centers. Weed is worse than cigarettes, in my opinion. I think that's a terrible take. I think weed is also bad for you, but to say weed, if you're saying smoking weed is worse than cigarettes, that's a, that's a better argument to have. But if you just say weed in general is worse than cigarettes, edibles are categorically not as bad as cigarettes. I would say edibles are not as bad as alcohol either. But if you're going to say that smoking weed is worse than smoking cigarettes, I would, I would beg to differ in the sense that maybe if you're going weed cigarette to joint which one is worse maybe you could you could you could argue that right but if you're actually looking at real life people that smoke weed are smoking 
if you're a real pothead, you're smoking, yeah, four or five joints a day. How many cigarettes is somebody that's addicted to cigarettes smoking? Two packs, 40 cigarettes a day. Post Malone was smoking 90 cigarettes a day. That is objectively worse than smoking weed. Blunts, yeah, you could throw that into the conversation because that has tobacco in it, and then you're really getting into the real argument. But, like, people that are addicted to cigarettes are smoking an obscene amount comparable to how often somebody is smoking weed. But weed still is bad for you. Uh, smoking weed. Blaze, Rusty, and Bobby for the sub. Edible's different story. Kind of up for debate. Still has negative side effects. Original and Carson for the sub. Mustard Man for the sub. During the holy Did you see Snoop Dogg stop smoking? That's a, that was a lie. It was a marketing campaign for a smokeless, uh, for a smokeless uh, fire pit. Season. The 1950- Snoop Dogg did not stop smoking. 56 popular song by- He quit smoke for a smokeless fire pit. George Melacrino, Mrs. Santa Claus, in the 1963 children's book, How Mrs. Santa Claus Saved Christmas, helped standardize and establish the character and role of Mrs. Claus in the U.S., which is kind of a big bummer, because I imagine in the 40s, they're like, dude, Santa, that must have been like a superstition. Kind of like the idea that people say, like, UPS or Amazon drivers are fucking your wives. Now it's like, oh, Santa's gonna come in and dick down your wife or your husband, dude. Hey, Shelly, I think you're, why is your husband so cheery lately? Probably because he's getting dicked down by Santa, uh... you know what I mean? Probably. Or she stopped yapping at him. Hey, Christmas came early, huh? Don't show that to my wife. In the 1940s, we get a lot of World War II influence. I mean, Santa was oh, used- Santa telling you to get drafted. Santa Claus has gone to war. Your gift, plenty of weapons. The inland way for USA. Santa says, sign up for the draft. Wartime propaganda to promote war bonds and boot- Bro, who the fuck is Ethan- Okay, this motherfucker. This motherfucker. I'm gonna ban you, but I, I need you to tell me. Who the fuck is this? All right, play, the, play the vid that set. Who the fuck is Ethan Table? And why do you keep bitching about him, bro? Who the fuck is that? Ethan Table, it just shows tables. Tables is what shows up. Don't ban him. Oh my god. I need him to answer mods. I'm uh, mods, it's Christmas Eve. I'm not gonna get mad at you. Mods, it's Christmas Eve. I'm not gonna get mad at you. Who is Ethan? I like I want him to tell me. I need I'm gonna ban him. I want him to fucking tell me who the fuck this is. He just keeps spamming it. Who is Ethan Table? Buddy, answer the question. I know you're on my stream. You see, you're see, you seeing me fucking yap right now. I'm trying to get towards your brain. Who the fuck is that? His name's Ethan. Bro. Bro. His name is Ethan. It's a table. Ethan table. Bro. Ethan's table. Ethan's table. Ethan's Table, Columbus Teen's effort to feed the hungry and help the needy continues. Is it a charity? In Columbus, Indiana. I mean, that's great. But, like, number, why are you telling me to look it up? And what the fuck am I, why are you spamming? It's a charity that I run. You're Ethan. This is you. You're Ethan. From Ethan's table. Mots! Stop timing him out. Oh my god. Juan. 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 He's not going to be able to answer my fucking... Oh my god. I'm going to freak out. I'm going to freak out. That's me. Okay, that's great, man. I mean, W you for having the charity. I just got mad at you because you're fucking spamming. That's great that you do that, though. I mean, uh, uh, fucking dub for you. Boost morale. His image was associated with patriotism and American values. In the movie Miracle on 34th Street in 1947, presented Santa as a kind-hearted, genuine character, further submitting his image in popular culture. Not only does Santa bring you gifts, motherfuckers like buy war bonds. We have to kill people. Buy war bonds? We're going to kill people. Also, 
rock flag eagle is what he says. And then we turn back a little bit more to the 1930s, which is where this face truly began. The Coca-Cola advertisements illustrator Hayden Sunblom. He made he made Santa what it looks like today. Fucking crazy name. Hadon? Is that Hadon or Hayden? Hadon Sunblom. Whatever. Sunblom Santa was rosy cheeked, portly, and wore a red suit trimmed with white fur. These images were based on Moore's description and Nat's illustrations, but added a warm, friendly, and approachable character, cementing the modern image of Santa Claus. These images solidify Santa's image as a jolly, plump man in a red suit with white fur trim, a broad wow. back, a cheerful, rosy cheeked, smiling face. Coca Cola is the reason that's why he looks like this. Not any, there wasn't some other person. It was a guy at Coca Cola just being like. <laughs> Red because Coca Cola, right? I mean, I don't know. Look oh my at my god, red and white. Bro, Santa's red and white because of fucking Coca Cola. A check for the fucking 10 gifteds. Dub in the chat for that shit. Thanks. If you gotta stop, thank you for the fucking 10 gifteds. A check 320. I appreciate that shit. He's red and white because of fucking Coca Cola. Then for some reason back then, how do I how they got that through? Well, I guess in the 30s, it's Depression era. So everyone was just like skinny and fucking poor. So he's probably like, this guy's fat as shit. He's happy as fuck. He's, he's the happiest guy in the world right now. And they're like, fuck it, print it, move it, sure. Historically, Coca-Cola was not the first soft drink company to utilize the modern image of Santa Claus in its advertising. White Rock Beverages had used a Santa figure in a monochrome Okay, no, there is red and white uh, elsewhere. For mineral water in 1915. That doesn't fucking count in my book, dude. Because everyone knows the Coca-Cola. It doesn't matter. We're going to keep going. In some images from the early 20th century, Santa was depicted as a personally making his toys by hand in a small workshop like a craftsman. Eventually, the idea emerged that he had numerous elves responsible for making the toys, but the toys were still handmade by each individual elf working in traditional manner. They're Whoa. like, he's a hardworking guy. And then they're like, he has a sweatshop. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of yeah. an evolution. And I think around this time, too, Lord of the Rings was really popular. Like, it's kind of new. And they're probably just like, any it's fucking out. The Lord of the Rings came out in the fucking 30s? <laughs> what? I thought, I thought Lord of the Rings came out around the time Harry Potter was released. Like, the 90s. Lord of the Rings book release date. What the fuck? 1954. Was Lord of the Rings. Hobbit. Hobbit book release date. 1937. J.R.R. Tolkien. But that motherfucker was born in 1892. All right. And they're like, oh, cool. Are they sexy? They're like, no, they're like short and gross. And like, they make like wooden trains, which that's fucked up too, because all the South Park reference, bro, South Park is referencing J.R.R. Tolkien stuff they're making is all 1930s toys people would be like oh they're making game boys but then nintendo would be like yeah the fuck right dude we're making nintendos not those stupid ass fucking elves the life and adventures of santa claus which was a children's book published in 1902 much of santa claus mythos was not firmly established at the time leaving bomb to give his quote-unquote nick loss well, he's kind of almost said something different. You gotta watch out when you read that. Yikes. Which is Nasil's Little One, a variety of immortal support. What am I reading? What the fuck are these sentences? A variety of immortal support. A home in the Laughing Valley of Ho Ha Ho and Ten oh, Reindeer ho. could not fly, but leapt in enormous flight like bounds. Claus's immortality was earned, much like his title, Santa. Decided by a vote of those naturally immortal, this work also establishes Claus motives a happy childhood among immortals. Which let me tell you something. This guy was given a book to write, and then he's just like, I'm gonna make it the f <laughs> step one, he's immortal. He's borderline. Lauren, dead. thank he you for the really five gifted. Helpers, but he does have reindeer. Thank you, you gotta sub, thank you, Lauren 61014 for the five gifted. Uh, Andy for the three. I like cheese on my mac and cheese. 413 Tommy for the three. Did you get a haircut uh, like a week ago? Sound for the 1500 biddies. Uh, do we know what Santa used to be used before elves? Ears that don't fly. I don't know. 
high, but they jump very, very far. Which if you think about it, they probably didn't go too in depth with this, but you'd have to jump far enough to cross the ocean. So I mean, it's basically flying, but still, that's a way bumpier ride, dude. Like think about the amount of times that Santa in that form probably got some fucking rocky bumps from that jumps. Doesn't matter. And in 1881, political cartoonist Thomas Nash drew on Moore's poem to create the first likeliness that matches our modern image of Santa Claus. His cartoon, which appeared in Harper's Weekly, depicted Santa as a rotund, cheerful man with a full white beard, holding a sack of laden with toys for lucky children. It is Nast who gave Santa his bright red suit trimmed with white fur, North Pole workshop elves, and his Were there fat people in the 1800s? Yeah. But I feel like less. Like, the obesity rate must have been much less just because there was, like, a lack of as much abundance of food. Wife, Mrs. Claus. Stores began to advertise Christmas shopping in 1820, and by the 1840s... Yeah, like, didn't, didn't being, um, I mean, I, we're going way back, like, BC era. Being overweight used to be a stapled, attractive trait, like, thousands of years ago. Because it showed that you were rich, and you had a lot of food. And you could provide, right? 40s, newspapers were creating separate sections for holiday advertisements, which often featured images of newly popular Santa Claus. This shit's going way back. Yeah, like we wealthy Coke, people. Which Coke, I still am pointing Coke out as being the fucking people that advertise this, but as you can see, the images here, it's not the same, all right? Not the same. Just want to put that out there. A Visit from St. Nicholas, which was an 1822 poem by Clement Clark Moore, commonly known as The Night Before Christmas, introduced Santa Claus as a jolly, chubby man who drove a sleigh pulled by reindeers. This betrayal was pivotal and shaping the modern image of Santa as a cheerful, plump, and friendly figure. I feel like we've said that seven different times. <laughs> yeah. People are making him fat. In 1809, Washington Irving, an American author, depicted St. Nicholas in his satirical work, A History of New York, as a pipe-smoking elfin Dutch burger. <laughs> What the fuck is an elfin Dutch burger? <laughs> this was a significant shift from his traditional religious portrayal, leaning more towards a folklore-based character. Like I said, Tolkien hasn't been born yet, but I feel like Tolkien might have been looking at Santa a little bit when he was writing some of his fantasy novels, all right? In 1809, the name Santa Claus evolved from Nick Dutch's nickname, Center Claus. Center Claus, a shortened form of Saint- It's gonna get more and more confusing. Nicholas, Dutch for Saint Nicholas. As his prominence grew, Center Claus was described as everything what from- What the fuck? Rascal? That was what Santa used to be? It is everything from a rascal with a blue three-cornered hat, red waist. That is so racist. Oh my god. Like that just, that drawing? Three-cornered hat, red waist coat and yellow stockings to a man wearing a broad brimmed hat and a huge pair of Flemish trunk hose. I, what did I even just say? He was basically dressing up as a rugby player. It's essentially, it's kind of in my mind's eye, that's what I had. A rugby player with a funny hat. Maybe that's how we'll describe it. Early representations of the gift giver from church history and folklore, especially St. Nicholas- It's chimney smoke, God damn it! It was covering his entire body. Merged with English character Father Christmas to create the mythical character known to the rest of the English-speaking world as Santa Claus. Are you following along? This is a lot of boring information. His appearance varied one depiction being John Leach's illustration. Uh, who gives a shit about this? Which now you get in because now some people still say this. I, I used to say this when I was a kid. Father Christmas. Which Father Christmas dates back as far as the 16th century in England during the reign of Henry VIII when he was pictured as a large man in a... Ain't Henry VIII the motherfucker that would kill people? because the church he, he would like kill his wives or something like that and Henry VIII what, there was a king that like couldn't divorce his wives so he made his own religion and he would like kill he would kill his wives or something like that green or scarlet robe lined with fur. He typified the spirit of good cheer at Christmas, bringing peace, joy, good food, and wine, and revelry. Which revelry means to fucking party, dude. And to fuck hard. Typify. Typify. What did I say? Typified? He typified. Whatever. During the Middle Ages- Bro, I would love to go to like a 15th century banger, dude. Just like a fucking big house party in the 15th century. Go down to the old well pub. They're just fucking scooping beer out of a keg. People are probably fucking smashed. And on the evening before his name day of 6 December, children were bestowed gifts. Santa lives in my mall? Oh, yeah, no, yeah, he lives in every mall. 
his honor. In the Middle Ages, that's when kids started getting gifts, all right? We're still not the farthest back. We're in the fucking Middle Ages now, and kids are just now getting gifts. We got a long way to go. As the legend of St. Nicholas spread through Europe, it mingled with local folklore. In different countries, he took on various attributes of local winter figures, such as the English Father Christmas, their Germanic god Woden, and the Dutch Sinterklaas. These figures were often portrayed as cheerful and benevolent, bringing a more joyful demeanor to the character. You notice how I said a more joyful demeanor to the character. A, a more joyful I think my to dad is Santa. Where do you think that means we're going? Let's keep going back in time. The earliest depictions of St. Nicholas is in the 4th century, dude. The fucking 4th century was the start of Santa? All right, that's like three to 400 AD. That's where we're at. Like Rome is still a thing. Julius Caesar Rome type shit is still going on. Christianity by this point is so new that it's probably like what we almost assume like vegan bakeries are today, where it's like kind of hip still, but people are like, we get it, we get it. Right? In the earliest depictions of St. Nicholas, the 4th century bishop, who was the primary inspiration for Santa Claus, portrayed him as a stern, thin religious figure, often in bishop's robes, and these images were more solemn and aligned with the role of a Christian saint. So he's not jolly, he's fucking cold, he's thin, and he's just like, God loves me, and you better love him back. Okay. It is believed that Nicholas was born sometime around 280 AD, somewhere around there, in Patara, near Myra, in modern day Turkey. That's where he came from. St. Nick, he's as white as we remember. I think that got that got smudged up in the history books a bit, right? Much admired for his piety. Well, I mean, that's the same thing with Jesus. Jesus is not historically white. Like, all the images of Jesus is a white guy. But Jesus would actually historically be seemingly more Middle Eastern. And kindness, St. Nicholas became the subject of many legends. It is said that he gave away all like of his he would just be wealth Middle and traveled Eastern. the countryside helping the poor and sick. One of the best known St. Nicholas stories is the time he saved three poor sisters from being sold into slavery or prostitution by their father by providing them with a dowry so that they could be married. Do you want a Coke yet? You want those polar bears to come sliding in yet? Remember St. Nicholas? Oh, who's the, the Coca-Cola polar bears. Like basically Buddha. It's like the literal story of Buddha who gave away his wealth to motherfucker sat under a tree, but St. Nicholas was just like, you you could pay for the pussy or take this dowry you could marry her <laughs> so there you go people are like are you an angel he's like kinda <laughs> sure that is the earliest conception of saint nick so we have the coca-cola saint nick this is where we're at right this is where we ended up everyone did that game of telephone with each other they're like he's like a tall religious guy and by the end of it they're just like he's fat and he's so happy about it he's a fat fat Fuck it, he's so happy about it. We're here, but we started here. Honestly, it could have gone worse. Obviously, everyone likes the big plump one. Oh, you want you want to grab his big one. Are you sitting crisscross applesauce? I am. Are you judging? Titty, you want to take them and stuff. This guy I'm kind of afraid of. This guy here is the guy, the guy who's just like, I'm gonna beat the shit out of you with my bare Yeah, him hand. holding a sword is kind of terrifying. Also, please. Alright, chat, I am not watching the rest of this. That was fun though. Jitty for the sub J for the three. So took a shower, came back, you're still in the same video. Really bored for the sub. Well, it's a long video. All right. What game do we want to play now, chat? A little bit of gaming. A little bit of gaming before we call it a day on this uh, New Year's, or not New Year's, <laughs> Christmas Eve fort. Oh, God. Should we try and kill that boss again? Dude, I don't know if I'm going to fucking get it done. I started molding before. Mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm-mm. -mm 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 Clash of Clans? You want me to get a Clash attack in? You want me to get a Clash attack in? Don't tempt me. Don't tempt me to get a Clash attack in. I will launch Clash of Clans. And you will sit... You'll have to sit through the attack. Do Fortnite? No, I'll, I'm not going to do Clash. We'll do... We'll do... We'll do Fortnite. Are you Catholic? Used to be. Jitty for the sub. All right, well, yeah, we'll chat. We'll do Fortnite. Are y'all fine with that? Oh! Me using a gem to donate goblins.
Oh, chat, we reached level four. You'll say hi to the clan mates. The Joe Bart clan. Should we kick someone? I always love kicking somebody on stream. Hold up. Who's least, who's least active? What the fuck was that noise? Skyler. Skyler, you better log on in a day or two, buddy, or else you're going to be fucking out of here. You're going to be out of here. How are we doing in war? Did we lose? That's a fucking team win, chat. If I've ever fucking seen one. We're starting it up. We're doing Christmas war. I don't care. Everybody's not going to attack, and I don't give a shit. I have to sub three people out. I'm sitting out. They're attacking now. We're starting it up, chat. We fucking won. We fucking won. I didn't do shit. My team won, though. Leveling up the clan. I just nonstop war. All right. Jitty for the sub. Switch games, please. I wasn't... I'm not... I'm not actually doing that. Try the fashion show again on Fortnite. Dude, I'm not... I'm not... I'm not attempting the fashion show again. Stop. Stop. Yo, who the 